Welcome, to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-682-F. Test Log T98816-OC 108682 Cross SCP Termination Testing for SCP-682 Due to the highly aggressive, adaptive, and intelligent nature of SCP-682, termination testing has been ordered, with clearance from O5 Command. With major concerns raised about possible developed immunities, due to the failure of SCP-409, and possible adaptations, all tests must first be carried out on tissue samples taken from SCP-6A2. This step may be bypassed only by O5 command order. Dash. Item, SCP-017. Tissue test record. Sample swallowed by SCP-017 without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-017. SCP-682 issues several sounds at extremely high volume, damaging several recording devices. Sound extends across several wavelengths, reported as the most godawful roar by staff. SCP-017 appears to stumble then returned to a far corner of the containment area. SCP-682 attempts to break containment of both SCP-682 and SCP-017. SCP-682 suppressed by agents, and removed. SCP-682 states, You foul bags of tissue. You don't. Data expunged. Notes, it is unclear if SCP-682 somehow damaged SCP-017, or communicated with it. Analysis of the recorded sound is ongoing. Dash. Item, SCP-063. Tissue test record. Sample eradicated. No traces above molecular level remain. Termination test record. SCP-063 was refitted to the end of a rotatory arm, which was deployed into 682 Anapos S enclosure. Initial approach proves partially successful, with SCP-682 losing more than 20% body weight before regeneration overtakes the destruction process. Newly regrown tissues are not vulnerable to SCP-063 Anapos. S eradication effect 682 destroys the deployment arm and 063 digs a hole through the enclosure and Apos S ground, where it is later recovered. 682 succeeds in extending a long prehensile limb through the hole and maiming two security personnel before containment is re established. Hypothesis 682 is not bound to base Earth biological chemistry and can adapt itself to be an APOS, organic an APOS, or an APOS, inorganic an APOS, as necessary. Some of the boys on the lab are arguing whether we can even classify it as an APOS, living an APOS, at least as we understand life. This worries me, because an unliving, undying intelligent monster. Well, that an APOS, s where you start getting sacrifices in your name. Dr. Zara? Dash. Item, SCP-162. Tissue test record. Sample entangled without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-162. SCP-682 begins thrashing violently, emitting several roaring sounds and issuing profanity directed at testing staff. SCP-682 becomes entangled with SCP-162, primarily in the lower body, head, and left fallen. Entangled areas undergo massive trauma due to SCP-682 thrashing. After four minutes of continued exposure, SCP-682 lunges away from SCP-162, severing its lower jaw and left hind limb, and causing serious tissue damage to many areas of its body. 
SCP-162 remains attached to the left forelimb of SCP-682. SCP-682 breaks containment, using SCP-162 against several agents, staff, and researchers, resulting in 11 deaths and 86 injuries. Forelimb and SCP-162 removed from SCP-682 during re-establishment of containment. Two additional deaths occurred during the recontainment of SCP-162. Note, General A has requested that Mr. Nokiam and the members of staff involved with the approval of this test report to cite command for a disciplinary hearing. Dash. Item, SCP-061. Tissue test record. Overridden by O5 dash command. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-061. SCP-682 enters the relaxed state consistent with SCP-061 exposure. SCP-682 is given the command lie down. SCP-682 remains unresponsive. Command repeated twice before SCP-682 lowers itself to the ground. Movements noted to be very sluggish and jerky. SCP-682 given the command to roll onto your back. SCP-682 unresponsive. Command repeated three times. SCP-682 shudders several times, partially rolling over before returning to former position. Command repeated six times. SCP-682 appears to undergo a violent seizure, partially rising before collapsing to the floor. SCP-682 given the command stand up. SCP-682 rapidly rises and breaches containment. SCP-682 ignores all commands given to it. Several agents and staff respond to re-establish containment. SCP-682 emits a high-pitched screech. All human beings in a 15-meter radius suddenly enter the relaxed state consistent with SCP-061 exposure. SCP-682 consumes several members of staff before being recontained by specially equipped emergency response teams. Sonic stun adaptation lost from SCP-682 after two weeks. Note, study into how SCP-682 integrated SCP-061 into its biology is ongoing. Dash. Item, SCP-053. Tissue test record. N.A., overridden by O5 dash command. Termination test record. SCP-682 introduced to SCP-053 containment area. SCP-682 appears to be very confused, and shows no sign of being affected by SCP-053. SCP-053 appears to be afraid of SCP-682, and hides behind a chair in her containment area. SCP-682 lowers itself to the ground, resting its head on the floor. SCP-053 approaches SCP-682, and after several seconds of hesitation, briefly touches SCP-682 before rapidly returning to her hiding place. SCP-682 does not react in any way. SCP-053 approaches SCP-682 and pats its head, causing it to exhale through its forward nostrils. SCP-053 claps and hops in place several times before embracing the head of SCP-6A2. For the remainder of the testing period, SCP-6A2 appears to be in a very docile state, with only two low-level escape attempts being made. SCP-053 is observed to bring toys and other items to SCP-6A2, and makes several drawings on its forward carapace with crayons. Staff entering at the end of the test phase are immediately attacked by SCP-682, resulting in two deaths and five injuries. SCP-682 contained and moved to separate containment unit. SCP-053 observed crying for several minutes after SCP-682 is removed. Notes The reaction of SCP-682 is notable for several reasons. First, it is one of the few incidents where SCP-682 has come in contact with biological tissue and not entered a rage state. Second, 
It has raised questions as to the physical makeup and composition of SCP-053, in regards to the lack of response of SCP-682. Third, it has provided a possible solution to long-term containment. However, approval for the mutual containment of two highly dangerous SCP items in a single containment unit is not likely. Dash. Item SCP-123 Tissue test record Tissue sample absorbed by the core Termination test record Test cancelled after review of testing done between SCP-162 and SCP-6A2. The potential issues arising from SCP-682 gaining control of SCP-123 are too great at this time. Review of this proposal will be made if SCP-682 is totally incapacitated by some means, with no potential of escape or sudden adaptation. Dash. Item SCP-173 Tissue Test Record NA Overridden by O5 Command Termination Test Record SCP-682 introduced into the containment area of SCP-173. SCP-682 makes several screeching noises and quickly presses against the wall farthest from SCP-173 staring at it the entire time. SCP-682 continues to stare at SCP-173 without pause for six hours. Agents equipped with large caliber sniper rifles dispatched and shoot out the eyes of SCP-682, at the same time stopping all observation of SCP-173 and SCP-682. After resuming observation, SCP-682 is shown to be on the floor with several injuries around its head, neck and legs. SCP-173 is seen to have tissue from SCP-682 on its hands. SCP-682 rapidly regenerates damage, and moves to a different wall, developing several sets of eyes on various parts of its body, many covered by thick, clear caps of armored carapace. SCP-682 maintains observation of SCP-173 for an additional 12 hours, despite additional efforts of agents and Foundation staff. SCP-682 allowed to exit containment area, and recaptured in temporary containment. Notes After review, it appears SCP-173 was unable to do lethal damage to SCP-682 due to a major difference in physical size. A possible repeat of this test may be made if SCP-682 is damaged enough to reduce its physical mass to a level equal with SCP-173. Dash. Item, Dr. Clef. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. SCP-682 introduced to testing area. Dr. Clef introduced to testing area. Dr. Clef and SCP-682 stare at each other for approximately three minutes. Dr. Clef slowly backs out of the testing area as SCP-682 continues to stare. Dr. Clef attempts to open door of testing area. Door of testing area determined to be locked. Dr. Clef reportedly uses several loud expletives and then attaches an unknown device to the door, keeping his eyes on SCP-682 the whole time. SCP-682 continues to stare. Dr. Clef detonates a small plastic explosive charge on the door, causing a containment breach. SCP-682 continues to stare. Dr. Clef engages emergency secondary lockdown doors and declares a partial containment situation. SCP-682 does not react. Dr. Clef proceeds to experiment observation center. Dash. Item, High Altitude Impact Tissue Test Record Denied by O5-8 Termination Test Record Testing Denied by O5-8 Notes Seriously? I mean, seriously? Drop it out of an aircraft and let it fall. Who in the data expunged? Dash Item one ordinary human child. 
Tissue Test Record NA Termination Test Record Child began to scream and cry when SCP-682 was introduced into the cell. Subject was immediately and messily devoured by SCP-682. Notes Okay, so that didn't end Apos, he worked so well. Maybe the fact that the kid was crying made 682 perceive it as hostile intent. Guest researcher Dr. W. Dash. Item, one ordinary human child, drug to cancel extreme emotional reaction. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. Child stood and smiled, giggling at SCP-682 with no sign of fear. SCP-682 devoured the subject messily. Notes Um. Maybe we can try that again. I and Apos, am sure somewhere out there there and Apos, as a kid who and Apos, LL make friends with it like SCP-053 did. Guest researcher Dr. W. Dash Item, Guest Researcher Dr. W. Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record Subject screamed in terror and pounded on the door to the test facility, begging to be let out. SCP-682 devoured it messily three minutes after being introduced. Notes Fucking sadistic asshole. I and Apos. They got no sympathy for that moron whatsoever. Introducing children to this fucking monster. What the hell? Assistant Director Clef. Dash. Item. A. W. A. Cutting laser. Tissue test record. Tissue sample was successfully bisected 13 times before adopting a mirrored finish. Termination test record. After multiple attempts, the main body of SCP-682 was successfully bisected into parts that were equal in mass at T plus 7 colon 13 hours. Dead scraps were removed from the room while the two halves, subsequently designated SCP-682-A and SCP-682-B, regenerated. After the recovery period, SCP-682 A and B appeared to survey the area and evaluate each other, presumably in anticipation of attack. Surface fluctuations indicative of internal modification were noted, but all external changes occurred, and disappeared far too quickly to be adequately described. High energy bioluminescent organs on the face, spine, and forelimbs were observed as well on both specimens, usually forming, pulsing, and disappearing again over the course of a few seconds. At T plus 3542 hours, SCP-682-A and B simultaneously collapsed on the floor and all vital signs ceased, remaining in this state for the following 48 hours. At T plus 84 hours, the laser was used again in an attempt to cut SCP-682-A and B into more manageable pieces, leading to minor structural damage to the room as the laser beam reflected off their skin. As both A and B remained immobile despite the increased potential for escape, 2D class personnel were released into the room. Immediately upon their entry, data expunged. Technical failure of the observation equipment and test chamber breach was detected from outside, activating safety protocol T98816-OC 108 682-N147. Containment was successfully re-established at the cost of A security personnel, D-class personnel, and A researchers, including doctors, data expunged. The majority of the testing area was considered unsalvageable and demolished for later reconstruction. Experiment supervisor Dr. A was found unconscious and in critical condition outside the observation chamber. See medical logs for A slash A slash A. Medical staff succeeded in sufficiently reviving him to be debriefed by Agent A 
whereupon he was harshly reprimanded and data expunged. Note. Only one SCP-682 was found in the lockdown area surrounding the wreckage, apparently at near full mass rather than the expected 50%. Scattered tissues within the facility account for the missing mass. Dr. H. and Apos, S. testimony indicates that SCP-682-A and B exhibited a higher degree of coordination following the security breach, but that once SCP-682-B became heavily damaged by security personnel, it was immediately devoured and reabsorbed by 682-A total loss of one of the SCP-682 specimens is considered highly improbable, and searches have been called to a halt. Agent Note Much as our department would love to know whether SCP-682 retained a single consciousness during its dissection, or whether the two counterparts were actually able to cooperate until the stalemate was ended by external forces, for practical purposes we do not under any circumstances advise trying that again. Dr. Noquayam Dash Item 60 Mount Fermi Nuclear Bomb Tissue Test Record NA Termination Test Record Testing Denied by 05-8 Notes One would think that putting SCP-682 in the epicenter of an explosion that can cause third-degree burns at a distance of 300 kilometers is a good idea, but as long as there are odds of survival we simply cannot go through with it. Yes, it and Apos, as a goddamn nuke, but if 682 survives and adapts we and Apos, DB bone beyond belief. 05 dash. Dash. Item SCP 662. Tissue test record. NA. Termination test record. Mr. Deeds is summoned and asked if he can destroy SCP 682 permanently. I and Apos, am terribly sorry, sir, I and Apos, am afraid I can and Apos, t. Mr. Deeds is asked if he can kill SCP-682. Again, sir, I and Apos, am terribly sorry, but I and Apos, am afraid I can and Apos, t. Mr. Deeds is asked if he can incapacitate SCP-682. As a matter of fact, depending on how sir means the word and Apos, incapacitate an apos, and depending on how long sir wishes the creature to be incapacitated. Yes. Mr. Deeds is asked to expand on how he would perform such an action. Sir, the simplest and quickest method, which I must point out would not be the most efficient, would be for me to offer myself up for the creature to devour me, certainly its offensive capacities would be lessened whilst it is occupied in consuming my flesh. This would be simplest as it requires no preparation on my part, Sir, but I and Apos, am certain you and Apos, LL understand that the overall effect on the creature would be insignificant. Were I to engage the creature in combat, either with or without weapons, I could certainly occupy its attention and defensive capacities for a longer interval, unfortunately, I and Apos, am afraid the creature would eventually defeat me, at which point it would begin consuming my flesh as I have previously described. However, I could certainly booby trap my person with a variety of noxious substances, soporifics, perhaps, or explosives, or perhaps encapsulated neurotoxins, or even, redacted, so that when the creature does inevitably consume me, it sustains further damage. That said, sir, I must remind you that the creature and Apos, as tendency towards regeneration means that any damage I inflict would be sadly temporary. Mr. Deeds is thanked and dismissed. Note, Mr. Deeds and Apos, knowledge of, redacted, is not to be considered a security breach. Dash. Item, SCP-689. Tissue test record. Overridden by O5-Command. Termination test record. SCP-682 exposed to SCP-689. Lights shut off in containment area. Lights remain extinguished for five minutes. Lights are switched on. SCP-689 remains in its original position. SCP-682 is in a pool of grey and black liquid, with no observable life signs. 
D-Class issued to physically verify SCP-682 termination, with two agents supervising. D-Class enters three steps into the containment area when SCP-682 rapidly rises and attacks D-Class personnel. SCP-682 breaks containment and escapes, killing one agent in the process. Remaining agent killed by SCP-689 due to accidental observation during testing. Notes. It appears that SCP-682 is not alive in a way that is currently understood, or is immune to SCP-689. In addition, it appears SCP-682 has prior knowledge of SCP-689, or was somehow able to understand its function in order to play possum and escape. Dash. Item. SCP-738. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. Researcher sits in SCP-738-2, and asks what would you want in exchange for permanently destroying the entity which we refer to as SCP-682 while leaving this planet, its biosphere, its human population, its human civilization, the SCP Foundation, and the rest of the universe intact? Entity takes form of the same entity as Test 203. States your foundation couldn't apos, t afford it, and you personally definitely couldn't apos, t afford it, and does not respond further. Dash. Item SCP-743. Tissue test record. Sample consumed without incident. Termination test record. Mobile container with SCP-743 was transported to testing chamber, into which SCP-682 was released from primary containment. SCP-743 and APOS, S container was opened remotely. SCP-743 observed resting, SCP-682 appears to ignore SCP-743. After 8 minutes, SCP-743 started flowing. SCP-682 appeared to notice within seconds. SCP-682 cautiously approached SCP-743 and tasted its flowing liquid. SCP-682 started to lap up the liquid from SCP-743. After a second, SCP-682 grasped SCP-743 with its forelimbs and started pouring the liquid straight from SCP-743 into its mouth. SCP-682 drank for 8 minutes, at times, data expunged, on its back. SCP-743 stopped flowing and started feeding. SCP-682 tried to fight off ant swarm, but was soon covered. Swarms started to feed on SCP-682, who stopped moving. 8 minutes later. After SCP-682 of you had been reduced to 79% of its original mass, SCP-682 opened its mouth and stuck out its tongue. SCP-682 and Apos, S tongue had become 5 meters long and sticky, like an anteater and Apos, S tongue. SCP-682 started to lap up ants off of itself with its tongue, eating thousands of ants at once. SCP-682 and SCP-743 continued to feed off of each other for 8 hours until testing was terminated. SCP-682 displayed faster than normal regeneration for 8 days afterward. Adapted ton remained for 8 days. SCP-743 treated SCP-682 as organic, but that and APOS, as hardly conclusive proof. More significant is the question of whether consuming 743 and APOS, as liquid contributed to 682 and APOS, as heightened regenerative abilities. If, as suspected, it did, 743 and 682 need to stay far, far away from each other. Dr. Lambert Dash Item SCP-807 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record A 682 Special, 10 kg of rotten meat and sharpened bone splinters, 10 liters of rancid mayonnaise, 1 liter potassium cyanide, and 1 kg morphine hydrochloride, 
combined into a solid mass then transmuted via SCP-807, was dumped into the testing room. SCP-682 devoured special, then began loudly demanding more. Nine minutes later, SCP-682 collapsed. After 45 minutes of observation, SCP-682 had not moved. Two D-Class personnel in anti-807 environment suits were sent in to verify that SCP-682 was in fact terminated. D-Class were equipped with further specials in case SCP-682 required further distracting. Specials were placed on ground in front of SCP-682 and Apos's head. In response, SCP-682 opened its eyes and began gnawing weakly on the nearest special. D-Class personnel began touching SCP-682, believing that it had been rendered harmless. At this point, SCP-682 and Apos's skin ruptured in at least 11 locations, releasing ultra-high pressure, estimated 2.7 pascals, jets of blood in all directions. Contact with SCP-682 and Apos, S blood breached the integrity of the NT-807 environment suits, and both D-Class personnel were contaminated. D-Class personnel began, data expunged, by the time SCP-682 had finished consuming the second special, its skin had healed over and both D-Class personnel had terminated. SCP-682 then devoured the third special with the same speed and enthusiasm as it had devoured the first. Dash. Item SCP-826, equipped with one copy of underscore the generally nice, friendly thing that can and will kill SCP-682 permanently if it so much as spots that damn lizard underscore, a 12-dash page short story written by Dr. A detailing a large, friendly monster that is stated to be capable of permanently killing SCP-6A2, and 1, 1, D-Class Personnel, D-682-32, equipped with 1, 1, 2010 Ducati Multistrada motorcycle for the purpose of evading SCP-6A2. Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record Story is put between SCP-826 and placed into large, empty room MX-8, MX-8, M in dimension, with a remotely operated doorway large enough to send SCP-6A2 through. SCP-6A2 is brought in front of the entryway securely. Once researchers clear the area, door is remotely opened, exposing a green pasture similar to the one described in the story. SCP-682 is reluctant to go through, so D-682-32 is sent through as bait. 682 follows through doorway, whereupon the doorway closes behind them. 30 minutes later, SCP-682 bursts back through the door it was sent through, somewhat worse for wear, killing a researchers and a agents in the process. Recovery personnel described the story and Apos, S. Pasture as having become a battleground, featuring impact craters with enormous body parts scattered around. Parts are thought to be from the story and Apos, S. Thing. Recovered story is retitled underscore the generally nice, friendly thing that tried to kill SCP-682 permanently but failed underscore, and is noticeably thicker with 209 individual pages that detail an epic battle between the two monsters. Additional attempts to coax SCP-682 into SCP-826 have been met with non-compliance on SCP-682 and Apos's part. Dash. Item SCP-914 Tissue test record Data expunged Termination test record Date to expunged, a fine or very fine is no longer to be used by any personnel having contact with SCP-682 at any point. In addition, any objects that have come in contact with SCP-682 at any point are not allowed to be processed by SCP-914. Any attempt to subvert this directive, later expunged. Notes SCP-682 is too large to fit into the booths, in most forms. In addition, 
the tissue tests have shown that SCP-682 has unpredictable reactions to SCP-914. Finally, SCP-914 is too valuable a research tool, and too delicate, for this type of test. It was nearly damaged after the incident, CN. 682-119857. And, data expunged, be repeated. Should the results be recovered, data expunged. Notes. Does this really surprise anyone? Given what 914 does to normal organics. Dr. G. Dash. Item SCP-272. Tissue test record. NA. Termination test record. SCP-682 is released into enclosure amidst a circular array of 32,000 watt, 2,000 watts, stadium lights, of which only one is switched on. SCP-272 is dropped onto SCP-682 Anapos, S Shadow, and embeds itself in the reinforced concrete as expected. SCP-682 quickly discovers that it is trapped by SCP-272 Anapos, S presence in its shadow, and starts to attack SCP-272. SCP-682 then stops midway through its attack, examines 272 closely, bellows an incomprehensible string of words, and slowly backs away from 272. All 30 stadium lights are then switched on and off in random stroboscopic disco pattern, at 4 Hz. SCP-682 is forcibly hurled around the enclosure in random directions, in accordance with a stroboscopic pattern, and sustains heavy damage. After 55 minutes of this process, 95% of SCP-682 Anapos, S. epidermis has been abraded away, its anterior left limb has been severed, 63 of its teeth have been broken out of its jaw, and its skull has been fractured to the point that both its eyeballs have been dislodged from their sockets. At this point, SCP-682 and Apos, S. exposed subdermal tissue begins to luminesce. The luminescence rapidly increases until it is brighter than the stadium lights, which eliminates SCP-682 and Apos, S. shadow entirely. SCP-682 then collapses, and is no longer affected by the stroboscopic pattern. SCP-682 continues luminescing for 48 hours, remaining immobile for the duration. D-class personnel who recovered SCP-272 from the enclosure were not attacked, but sustained permanent retinal damage from SCP-682 and Apos, S luminescence despite wearing eye shields. After 48 hours, SCP-682 resumes normal activity. Note, how did 682 know not to attack 272? Did it recognize the artifact? Was it able to read the glyphs carved into 272 and Apos, S surface? If 682 is literate, is it vulnerable to textual mimetic kill agents? Suggested methods for a viability study are welcome. Dash. Item SCP-343 Tissue test record NA Termination test record See Incident Report Tales from the Bright Side Chapter 1 Vertical Bar 682-TFTBS1 Dash Item SCP-963 Tissue Test Record NA Termination Test Record See Incident Report We and Apos, re off to be the Lizard Vertical Bar 682-WO2BTL Dash Item SCP-702 Tissue Test Record Tissue sample offered as trade item to SCP-702-1. 702-1 accepted, trading it for what appears to be a two-patty hamburger as commonly sold by the, redacted, franchise. Termination test record. SCP-682 is contained and offered as a trade item to SCP-702-1. 
702-1 considers the tank for roughly 13 minutes before taking it. Item left in exchange is a metal cage, containing a specimen of Cyticula crameri manilensis, rose-ringed parakeet. Sixteen hours later, SCP-682 is returned to the chamber where the trading was affected, without its containment tank. SCP-702-1 is reluctant to divulge information regarding this event. Examination of debris regurgitated by 682 during the preceding recontainment reveals fragments from a number of curious items, including, data expunged. The parakeet is currently being kept at Dr. Quater and Apos, S. Office. Dash. Item, SCP-096. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. Containment tank containing SCP-096 was placed in SCP-682 and Apos, S. Cell. Personnel vacated vicinity and the tank was opened remotely. Screams of the two entities continue for 27 hours, at which point the noise abruptly stops. Sonar-based video feeds reveal SCP-096 severely wounded and huddled in the southwest corner, apparently upset. Feed shows SCP-682 on the north end of the room, approximately 85% of its initial mass absent. Recontainment teams retrieve both entities with relative ease. Further attempts to expose SCP-096 to SCP-682 cause it to turn away from 682, jumping in place while clawing at its face and screaming. Dash. Item, SCP-536. Tissue test record. Tissue divided into samples and subject to the individual effects of SCP-536 and APOS, styles. Notable results follow. Increase in G, tissue restructures itself into neutron degenerate matter. Decrease in E, tissue maintains loose integrity as a cloud of ions, regenerates upon re-establishment of normal laws of physics. Decrease in theta. Tissue disintegrates. Termination test record. SCP-682 and Apos, S containment tank inserted into SCP-536. Speed of light, strong nuclear force and fundamental charge dials decreased progressively. 682 and Apos, S containment tank is nearly immediately destroyed, and 682 and Apos, S body begins disintegrating. Due to intense light and radiation, visual is lost. Free neutrons, pions, kaons, and more exotic mesons, described in, redacted, are detected. 55s into the experiment, the primary detection equipment fails. Upon boot up of the secondary detection equipment, dials are at minimum levels. 682 is again visible in the chamber, reduced to roughly 1% of its normal size. Analysis suggests 682 has reformed into a previously unknown form of matter, kept together by quantum effects. Asked. Researcher A becomes aggressive and turns the dials randomly and violently before being removed from the premises. 682 recovers its original shape upon restoration of standard physics. Note, I don and Apos, T blame him. I could swear, at one point, that thing looked like it was actually enjoying the experience. Dash. Item, SCP-524. Tissue test record. Sample consumed without incident. Termination test record SCP-524 and SCP-682 introduced into testing chamber. SCP-682 examines SCP-524 suspiciously, at which point SCP-524 begins gnawing on SCP-682 and Apos, S anterior right limb. SCP-682 jumps backward, bellowing.
SCP-524 pursues SCP-682 for two minutes, at which point SCP-682 climbs four meters up the wall of the testing chamber and is beyond SCP-524 and APOS's reach. SCP-524 ceases pursuit and begins washing its face with its paws, it continues this activity for 15 minutes, during which time SCP-682 remains 4 meters up the wall and beyond SCP-524 and APOS's reach. SCP-524 then crosses to the other side of the test chamber and begins breaching containment. Test aborted. Dash. Item SCP-811 Tissue test record Sample consumed without incident Termination test record Direct exposure of SCP-811 to SCP-682 disallowed due to unreasonably high risk of specimen loss. Instead, mucus from SCP-811 and APOS, S. palmer planter surfaces is collected over a course of a months, and then sprayed on SCP-682 with high-pressure hoses. SCP-682 and APOS, S body mass is reduced by 27% before the mucus reaches a complete burn covering of the remaining body mass, and is unable to decay it further. Dash. Item SCP-1237 Tissue test record N.A. Termination test record a deliberate containment breach was induced which an SCP-1237-1-L specimen was permitted to observe from a safe distance. Thirteen security personnel were killed before containment was re-established. Subject was dosed with it to encourage REM sleep and onset of SCP-1237 and instructed to dream that SCP-682 was a small house cat with no special abilities and that the security team had been able to destroy it easily. Seven seconds after onset of SCP-1237 event, subject began to seize violently. Subject was declared dead after 32 seconds. Autopsy discovered the subject and APOS, S body covered with scratch and bite marks and infected with bubonic plague, toxoplasmosis, and subacute regional lymphadenitis, cat scratch fever. The bodies of the deceased security personnel displayed similar characteristics. A small house cat was found in SCP-682 Annapos' containment chamber cleaning blood off of its coat, said cat regenerated into SCP-682 within three hours. Dash. Item SCP-1361 Tissue test record Sample consumed without incident DNA markers from SCP-682 present in SCP-1361 sample afterward. Sample showed increased resistance to incineration. Termination test record. A secondary sample of SCP-1361 was allowed to grow to 1,000 kg in mass. SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber was purged of acid and SCP-1361 was poured onto SCP-682 from above. SCP-1361 covered and fully engulfed SCP-682 and no activity was observed for three hours. In the period from three to seven hours following exposure, SCP-1361 began to develop legs jaws, and a physical appearance similar to SCP-6A2. SCP-1361 breached containment and attacked Foundation staff in a manner consistent with an SCP-6A2 breach and killed 17 personnel. SCP-1361 proved immune to small arms fire in this state. Aerial dispersal of napalm was necessary to destroy sample by incineration, after which a skeletal and circulatory system identical to SCP-682 was retrieved from its remains. Remains were returned to SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber, where they regenerated into SCP-682 within six hours. Subsequent tissue testing indicated that SCP-682 temporarily contained DNA markers from several species present in SCP-1361, as well as temporarily exhibiting a mild scent similar to pork rinds. Dash. Item SCP-1933 
tissue test record. Sample immersed in 1 liter of bodily fluids from SCP-1933. Sample fully converted into Irish cream. Termination test record. 200 liters of bodily fluids were collected from SCP-1933 over a 3-month period. Fluids were introduced into SCP-682 and APOS-S containment chamber in bulk. SCP-682 begins consuming fluids rapidly, and manifesting apparent signs of intoxication far more rapidly than a human would after consuming an equivalent amount of Irish cream. This has been hypothesized to be the result of portions of SCP-682 and APOS-S anatomy being transubstantiated into Irish cream, however, instead of dying, SCP-682 continues consuming the fluids. When it has finished consuming all the fluids, SCP-682 collapses on the floor, and begins loudly vocalizing while clawing spasmodically at its face and abdomen. After five minutes of this, SCP-682 begins vomiting up what appears to be the bodily fluids of SCP-1933, but in much larger quantities, as well, the floors and walls of the containment chamber are instantly converted into Irish cream upon contact with the vomitus, resulting in structural failure and containment breach. Test aborted, remainder of vomitus incinerated. SCP-682 subsequently manifests no further signs of intoxication. Dash. Item, SCP-507. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. SCP-507 was physically attached to SCP-682 and APOS. S left forelim with nylon zip ties while SCP-682 was inactive due to physical destruction incurred during an unrelated containment breach. Attending personnel continued to spray SCP-682 and APOS. S body, with the exception of the limb to which SCP-507 was attached, with hydrochloric acid provided via high-pressure hoses. After 7 hours and 52 minutes, SCP-507 and APOS-S anomalous properties activated and it and SCP-682 both disappeared. SCP-507 re-manifested in an unpopulated area adjacent to Site 8, approximately 8,000 kilometers away, 63 hours later, attached to an entity possessing large fangs and a pair of vestigial wings but otherwise identical to SCP-682 by nylon zip ties of a different color than the ones applied by containment personnel at the beginning of the test. A handwritten note was found pinned to SCP-507 and APOS-S chest, reading as follows. Dear Universe 5802-Sigma Blue Romeo, In an APOS-S underscore your underscore problem now, suckers. Dash. Item, SCP-2599. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. SCP-2599 was ordered to attack SCP-682 until it is 200% dead. SCP-2599 proceeded to engage SCP-682 in combat for 42 minutes, at the end of which three of SCP-682 and APOS-S limbs had been severed, its thorax had been crushed and both its eyeballs had been ruptured. SCP-2599 then seized SCP-682 and APOS-S head, apparently in preparation for pulling it off of SCP-682 and APOS-S body. In response, SCP-682 vocalized the phrase, Kill me, you sack of organs, go. SCP-2599 immediately released SCP-682 and stood unmoving until security personnel removed it from the testing chamber. Subsequent attempts to terminate SCP-682 before it could regenerate from its injuries were ineffective. Note, it is hypothesized that the concrete kill me in some way took precedence over the more abstract attack it until it is 200% dead. Dash. Item, SCP-513. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. Begin log.
1 slash 22 slash 8 1500 SCP-682 temporarily incapacitated via incineration and transfer to a video monitored soundproof containment chamber. 1 slash 22 slash 8 1600 SCP-513 introduced to room affixed to robotic arm. 1 slash 22 slash 8 1630 SCP-682 regenerates fully. 1 slash 22 slash 8 1635 SCP-513 is rung three times via robotic arm. After the first ring, SCP-682 howls and covers its anapos, ears anapos. Due to the difference of anatomy and lack of visible ears, it can be safely assumed that the motion of covering the sides of its head accomplishes this. 1 slash 22 slash 8 1636 SCP-513 and robotic arm retracted from test chamber and returned to containment. 1 slash 22 slash 8 1640 SCP-682 uncovers its anapos, ears anapos, and begins pacing the test chamber. 1 slash 23 slash 8 1640 SCP-682 continues pacing. 1 slash 24 slash 8 1640 SCP-682 continues pacing. 1 slash 25 slash 8 1640 SCP 682 continues pacing. 1 slash 26 slash 8 1640 mass amounts of aerosolized sedatives and tranquilizers introduced to containment chamber via ventilation. 1 slash 26 slash 8 1,645 SCP-682 loses consciousness. 1 slash 26 slash 8 1,646 SCP-682 begins sleepwalking. 1 slash 26 slash 8 1,647 SCP-682 breaches containment. Hallucinations of a pale, thin, Large clawed entity resembling SCP-682 stalking the containment site were reportedly experienced by all present site personnel. Security footage shows no such entity on site. Due to mass hysteria, security teams were unable to re-establish containment of SCP-682 and are seen on footage firing repeatedly at walls before being dismembered by thin air. 1-26-8 1800 Mobile Task Force ETA-10, see no evil, is deployed, equipped with HUD video-enabled enclosed helmets. SCP-682 is located in SCP-513's containment cell, still unconscious, curled around SCP-513's gelatin containment cube. 1-26-8 1830 SCP-682 returned to containment and awoken via high-pressure HCL spray. SCP-682 complains that it was having a such a lovely dream. End log. Persistent monitoring and separate testing of both SCP-513 and SCP-682 since the experiment has shown no lasting effects on either object. Post-testing observation Based on what appeared to be an initial adverse reaction from SCP-682, we don't know if the entity incorporated SCP-513 to itself, or if it worked the other way around. Either way, in light of the loss of 67% of site staff and 45% of site D-class, requesting that Cognito Hazardous Item Testing for SCP-682 be suspended until we understand just what the hell happened here. Dr. Kerberos. Approved, 05-4. Dash. Item, SCP-2140. Tissue Test Record. N.A. Termination Test Record
On 13 March 2004 at 1,100 hours the SCP-682 observation booth was cleared of all personnel without basilisk certification, under the authority of senior agent Vanessa Ryder. At 1,115 an image of the SCP-2140 glyph was projected onto the wall of the SCP-682 containment enclosure. Forward Test T98816-OC 108 682-2140 Video Surveillance Begin Log, the 13th of March 2004 SCP-682 observes the glyph for 37 seconds and then turns toward the observation booth. I have been in our pass. He's seen this since the time of... Data expunged. It wanted our pass. Do you work? Unlike your dancing shadows, my past was real and cannot be rewritten, as much as I wish it were. SCP-682 paused and began scratching something into the ground. I have been in our pass. Do you forgotten what the data expunged looked like though? Here let me SH. Observation booth personnel activated the emergency shutters, cut camera feeds and pumped soporifics into the chamber. End log. Piecemeal analysis of the partial glyph drawn by SCP-682 indicates that while it was a 2140-1-D instance, it contained significant apparent errors that would likely prevent it from functioning. Since SCP-682 has an anapos, T deployed these glyphs in the past, it is likely not able to do so and does not pose an immediate ontological threat. It remains possible that it could rediscover the methods of SCP-2140-1 construction. SCP-682 should be prevented from making marks, symbols, or writing of any kind. Dash. Item SCP-2935 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record During exploration of SCP-2935, MTFE-13 discovered SCP-682 within temporary containment at Site-81. Upon further investigation, Entity showed no signs of life. Note Due to the nature of SCP-2935, it is unlikely or impossible that this result can be replicated. This does, however, answer the question that other alternate realities have not been able to. What it means for ours is uncertain. Dr. Harrison, Site AE1 Dash Item Proposal to transport SCP-6A2 to an orbital asset, then activate SCP-1012 Tissue test record Denied by O5-8 Termination test record. Testing denied by 05 8. Notes. Once more, with feeling. There are three possible outcomes of this test. Case 1, it works. Case 2, you and Apos, they just given 680 to its own spacecraft. Case 3, the spacecraft isn't an Apos, T is insulated from Earth as we hope, and 1012 takes us out too. Denied. Dash. Item, SCP-2337 Tissue Test Record SCP-2337 was informed that the SCP-682 tissue sample was a tone-deaf food critic who needed to hear a convincing argument as to which food item is the greatest in existence. After a 10-minute speech from SCP-2337 on the superiority of gummy worms, the tissue sample had been disintegrated from the resulting sonic shockwaves. SCP-2337 appeared highly pleased with itself. Termination Test Record After being told that SCP-682 was a prominent anti-gummy worms extremist, SCP-2337 emulated the sound of a charged trumpet and entered SCP-682 Anapos, S Chamber. Begin Log Noble Turkey Stance Fist of the 11,000 War Cushions Dead are the Cackening Damn the Tornadoes, Sis Boom Cack Leave Good idea have Cack 
SCP-2337 demolishes the southern blast door to SCP-682 Anapos's chamber with a vocal shockwave, then exits, once again appearing highly pleased with itself. Containment breach of SCP-682 averted after minimal fatalities of containment staff. End log. Dash. Item, SCP-682 instance transplanted from alternate dimension. Tissue test record. Denied by O5-8. Termination test record. Testing denied by O5-8. Notes. A potentially permanent stalemate between instances would solve containment. However, transporting an instance to our dimension would be unnecessarily dangerous, not even to speak of containing another one, or the consequences of if they chose to cooperate. Denied. Dash. Item, SCP-2521. Tissue test record. Tissue taken without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 was restrained in Chamber 145-B and the laser was introduced. Laser began cutting into SCP-682 and Apos, s back, Command Room Emergency Shutter was closed. Begin log. Nine seconds. What are you doing? Thirteen seconds laser begins carving info-hazardous data onto SCP-682 and Apos, s hide. SCP-682 emits a loud roar. 14 seconds command room emergency shutter closes. 2 minutes, 4 seconds laser finishes cutting. 2 minutes, 6 seconds SCP-2521 manifests. 2 minutes, 12 seconds SCP-682 breaks restraints. 2 minutes, 14 seconds SCP-2521 latches onto SCP-6A2. 2 minutes, 15 seconds SCP-6A2 begins vocalizing. 2 minutes, 16 seconds SCP-2521 demanifests, taking with it only the section of SCP-6A2 and Apos, S skin which was carved with info-hazardous data. Test aborted. End log. Dash. Item, Dr. Heikula. Tissue test record. Denied by O5-8. Termination test record. Testing denied by O5-8. Notes. Dr. Heikula is prohibited from interacting with SCP-682 in any possible way. Why he would even attempt to do so is beyond any logical reason. Dr. Heikola has been detained for possible memetic contamination. Denied. Dash. Item, SCP-2305-A. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. An SCP-2305-A instance generated involving SCP-682, and has been transcribed here by order of O5-A. Item number, SCP-682. Object class, Keta. Proposed neutralization method, Operation Failsafe Tanga 34 would be enacted upon successful removal of approximately 90% of SCP-682 and Apos's body mass, while incapacitated in a space shuttle that has been set to land on the moon. Operation Failsafe Tanga 34 consists of the following procedures. 1. 20 billion 200 million 500 thousand RDS 220 hydrogen bombs and 750 SCP-2195 vertical bar SCP-2195-1 instances will be transported to the moon, spread out across the surface. It will be detonated with 10 separate inputs at Site-19. Materials for bombs would be generated from SCP-2400 and collected stillbirths for SCP-2195-1 instances. 2. 300 tilde slash Sumerian reality vacuum attachments have been attached in an hexagonal pattern on the moon, with approximately 35 kilometers of space between each one. 
impact covers will maintain the explosions occurring on the moon to prevent any debris from hitting Earth. 3. Area 0 Tanga has been constructed 4,000 km into the Earth and currently houses a large spheroid approximately the size of the Moon, constructed from SCP 2400 materials. SCP 1056 will be used to lower the size of the spheroid for easier transportation. 4. Amnestix would be administered to approximately 80% of the human population after detonation through use of a modified red talisman algorithm to produce non-lethal cognitive hazardous amnestix. Amnestix will be applied to every source of common media, such as newspapers, television, billboards and several popular internet sites. Result of neutralization attempt. Once the weakened SCP-682 arrived at the Moon and Apos, S surface, all explosives were detonated. The covers successfully dampened most of the explosion, but 150 large meteorites still land on Earth. Spheroid was successfully transported to the Moon and Apos, S orbit field and grown to its original size. Amnestix were successfully administered to approximately 78% of the human population. However, 0.03 milliliters of blood belonging to SCP-682 survived the termination attempt, and adapted from it. SCP-682 grows to approximately the size of Saturn, and proceeds to destroy and eat multiple planets within the solar system. The moral of the story this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a chomp. But for Reals, Don and Apos, TF with the gecko. Dash. Item SCP 241 Vertical Bar SCP 241. Note Further testing of SCP 241 was required to determine if its anomalous properties allowed it to be used against SCP 6A2. Skin tissue was removed from D-Class Personnel D-682-39, with the tissue then being wrapped around one end of a short steel rod. D-682-40 used the rod to open SCP-241, manipulating such that only the skin tissue touched SCP-241. SCP-241 displayed different recipes than when it was previously opened. D-682-40 prepared one of the recipes, which was then eaten by both D-682-39 and D-682-40. D-682-39 died of anaphylactic shock six minutes later, while D-682-40 showed no ill effects. SCP-241 was deemed suitable for use against SCP-6A2. Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record SCP-682 tissue sample was affixed to end of a steel rod, and the rod was used by D-682-40 to open SCP-241. SCP-241 showed different recipes than the previous time it was opened. Of the 99 recipes, three were in unknown languages, two were incomprehensible word salad, and one was a mimetic kill agent. Of the remaining 93 recipes, 100% had at least one instruction or ingredient which made it impossible to follow the recipe with complete faithfulness. Examples include Chill to minus 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit before serving. Garnish with antimatter parsley. Marinate for 900 trillion years. D682 41 was tasked with cooking the 93 usable recipes using SCP 241 plus a correction sheet written by Dr. A, which replaced impossible ingredients and instructions with the closest feasible analog, with the results being delivered to SCP 682 containment cell upon completion. SCP-682 has shown no ill effects after having eaten all 93 meals. Dash. Item SCP-2578-D 
Note, test was conducted independent of the foundation by SCP-2578-D secondary designation as a termination test has been given to incident 2578-682-1. Tissue test record N.A. Termination test record During a routine maintenance check of SCP-682 and APOS, S. Containment Enclosure, SCP-682 sustained five cranial penetration wounds in rapid succession and remained unresponsive for a period of roughly 32 minutes. Upon recovery, SCP-682 yelled F you and all three of your moons toward the ceiling. Five minutes afterward, Dr. Naismith received the following instance of SCP-2578-B on his personal email account. Three Crescent Symbol, has failed. Three Crescent Symbol, is greatly embarrassed, and regrets the continued existence of your unpleasant lizard. Orders were orders. And for the record, Three Crescent Symbol, Didn and Apos, T. Miss. Dash. Item, SCP-2617 Tissue Test Record Not attacked by SCP-2617-A instance Termination Test Record SCP-682 was released in the abandoned village of A Russia via airlift, and proceeded to attack the village. Coordinates were set to correspond with SCP-682 and Apos, S position thus generating up to 8, 8, SCP-2617-A instances holding 8, unique variants of SCP-2617-B. SCP-2617-A instances attack SCP-682, destroying up to 45% of its body mass. Five hours after the beginning of termination test, SCP-682 released a series of radio waves. SCP-2617-C dissipated, and all SCP-2617-A and SCP-2617-B instances underwent spontaneous sublimation. Personnel supervising the termination test were also exposed to the radio waves. Interviews with these personnel suggest that they are unable to recognize the concept of Russia. Dash. Item, SCP-169 Tissue test record. Denied by O5-8. Termination test record. Denied by O5-8. Notes. No can do. I can understand how you might think that tracking down 169, then making it consume 682 would work, but it and Apos, S survived and adapted to everything else we and Apos, they tried. If it survives being eaten by 169, and, God forbid, grows as big as it, humanity would be screwed beyond belief. Denied. Dash. Item, SCP-939-8, and SCP-939-8. Tissue test record. Not attacked by SCP-939-8, nor SCP-939-8. Termination Test Record SCP-939-8 and SCP-939-8 both entered the containment cell for SCP-682. SCP-939-8 and SCP-939-8 were seemingly distressed and refused to attack SCP-682 while repeating a call for help. SCP-682 then attacked the two devouring them after roughly and brutally mutilating the bodies of both subjects. Notes SCP-939 and SCP-682 Don and Apos, T match well. I guess we will not be using them anytime soon. Don and Apos, T release the beasts again. Dash Item SCP-173 with a photograph of SCP-096 attached to it. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test record. Denied by O5-8. Notes. No. Absolutely not. Setting aside the problem of SCP-682, 
an SCP-173 that cannot be observed for fear of triggering a response from SCP-096 is a self-perpetuating catastrophe that the Foundation does not, under any reasonable circumstances, have the slightest desire to unleash. Denied with vehemence. Dash. Item, SCP-204. Tissue test record. Overridden by O5 dash command. Termination test record. SCP-204-2 and Upos, S danger seeking behavior was played upon to create a desire to test SCP-204-1 and Apos, S combat prowess. Through the use of carefully crafted stories, SCP-204-2 was informed of the existence of SCP-6A2. Hints were given to SCP-204-2 that SCP-682 was impossible to kill by conventional means, and only a warrior with special talents could defeat it. SCP-682 was released, heavily sedated, into the testing chamber. SCP-204-2 was then sent in through the airlock. Begin log. Five minutes SCP-682 regains consciousness and begins to move about test chamber. Five minutes, 47 seconds SCP-204-2 begins shouting expletives at SCP-682 to provoke it. SCP-204-1 materializes at this time into an oversized armored knight bearing a massive battle axe and kite shield. 5 minutes, 59 seconds SCP-682 produces a near deafening roar and charges at SCP-204-1. 6 minutes, 9 seconds SCP-204-1 clashes with SCP-682 in a fair simile of an ancient gladiatorial battle. SCP-204-2 seems to be watching the battle with rapt attention. 16 minutes 51 seconds combat between the two SCPs is extremely violent due to their size and strength. SCP-204-1 has succeeded in chopping off or tearing loose all of SCP-682 and Apos, S limbs, along with much of its flesh and part of its head. SCP-204-1 has suffered tremendous damage from the combat. SCP-204-1 Anapos, S Anapos, Shield Arm Anapos, is broken off at the elbow, and the axe is missing half of the blade. The Anapos, Armor Anapos, SCP-204-1 wears is severely scraped, dented, and torn in places. It appears unable to walk though it still stands in place between SCP-204-2 and SCP-6A2. 18 minutes SCP-6A2, while not dead, is sufficiently incapacitated. Researchers direct SCP-204-2 to have SCP-204-1 feed on the remains of SCP-682 in order to regenerate itself. 26 minutes, 29 seconds SCP-682 begins to regenerate while SCP-204-1 is busy consuming severed pieces of it. 29 minutes, 3 seconds SCP-682 regains motion and proceeds to attack SCP-204-1, this time gaining the upper hand due to SCP-204-1 and Apos, as current state of damage. 29 minutes, 46 seconds SCP-204-2 and SCP-682 both tranquilized. SCP-682 additionally hosed with hydrochloric acid to prevent additional breach attempts. SCP-204-2 removed from testing chamber and returned to containment. End log. Notes While SCP-204-1 does appear to be capable of defeating SCP-682 in pitched combat, the carnivorous nature of SCP-204-1 does not seem to be an effective way of neutralizing SCP-6A2. SCP-682 regenerates too quickly to allow SCP-204-1 to destroy it completely. SCP-204-1 is hereby proposed as a last resort countermeasure against SCP-682 in the event of a full containment breach. If nothing else, the bastards can hack each other to bits while we try to regain control of the situation. Addendum Proposal denied. 
We are not now, nor are we ever going to risk the containment breach of a second Keter class SCP during an ongoing Keter class breach situation. 05 Command. Dash. Item SCP 3108. Tissue test record. Tissue was transformed into a piece of Uroplatis fimbriatus, giant leaf tailed gecko, tissue. Termination test record. D-1782 was instructed to enter SCP-682 Anapos, S containment chamber and shoot SCP-682 with SCP-3108. After missing six times due to fear, D-1782 successfully hit SCP-682 with an SCP-3108-1 instance. However, Instead of becoming inferior as expected, SCP-682 began to grow larger, and gained the ability to explode whenever threatened, and then reconstitute itself. SCP-682 eventually breached containment in this state, causing a causalities. SCP-682 was successfully subdued by gunfire after it returned to its normal state, and was recontained. Notes I have a theory on what just occurred, SCP-3108 causes things to be inferior to the subject, right? Well, SCP-3108 transformed SCP-682 into something that would be seen as worse and inferior by the Foundation, larger, and stronger, strong enough to break containment. SCP-682 actually decreasing in power would not a pause, d actually be seen as inferior to us. Dr. Westron Dash. Item SCP-2719 Tissue SCP-682 Test Record SCP-682 went inside Termination Test Record Outside Dash. Item SCP-3930 Tissue Test Record SCP-682 Anapos S tissue was brought into the void, and ceased existing. Termination Test Record SCP-682 is introduced to SCP-3930, and successfully ceases existing. However, despite SCP-682 no longer existing, Foundation personnel still perceive SCP-682. When the entity is looked at, a vivid image or memory is recalled in the brain of personnel that is described as resembling the appearance of SCP-6A2. This entity has been observed attacking personnel, killing them, despite the fact that SCP-6A2 does not exist during these attacks. It should be noted that personnel killed in this manner died, when their brains ceased to function, despite the appearance of physical damage occurring on their bodies. All destruction caused by this entity becomes real, even if the entity that caused it did Nanapos, t. 15 hours later, SCP-682 was found within its containment chamber. It is unknown how SCP-682 managed to gain existence after this incident. Dash. Item, SCP-3207. Tissue test record, SCP-682 and Apos, S tissue was shot by SCP-3207, resulting in its complete destruction. No intact organic residue left by SCP-682 and Apos, S tissue was found after the interaction. Termination test record, SCP-682 was shot by SCP-3207 several times. SCP-682 was destroyed for a period of six hours, before five smaller organisms, theorized to have been composed of SCP-682 and Apos, S tissue, grew within SCP-682 and Apos, S containment chamber. These organisms successfully breached containment and merged with each other, recreating SCP-682. Dash. Item, SCP-3922. Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination Test Record, SCP-3922 was used with a 10-minute recording of security footage taken of SCP-682 during a containment breach, which, to add the semblance of a fictional narrative for the purposes of SCP-3922 jurisdiction, 
was labeled Lizard, the tale of the unpleasant lizard. The objective was to witness a plausible termination of SCP-682 and replicate the results. The video was altered into a 72-hour military epic film titled Sisyphus Among the Living, displaying an unsuccessful full-scale military assault on SCP-682 by instances of SCP-3922-A. The cast included Alan Rickman as Commandant Marius, the SCP-3922-A officer tasked with leading SCP-682 Anapos, S. Termination, and Michael Clark Duncan as Lieutenant Havisham, the apparent protagonist of the first third of the film. No lethal damage to SCP-682 is observed. At the end of the film, the last surviving SCP-3922-A Stormtrooper, played by Patrick Swayze, activates an experimental device that teleports at least five instances of gigantic primates, analogous to the description of Operation Galahad Vertical Bar SCP-PC-003, onto the battlefield. The final shot is of SCP-682 laughing as the creatures approach in the 1968 song Live in and Apos, in the sunlight, Loving in Apos, in the moonlight by Tiny Tim plays in the background. The end title card reads to be continued. Note, the fact that the cast is composed entirely of noteworthy deceased actors and actresses could possibly be due to SCP-3922 and Apos's connections with SCP-2922-C. Dash. Item, SCP-3519. Tissue test record. Tissue sample has no observable reaction to exposure to SCP-3519. Termination test record. T8, the 25th of February 2019. Acid levels were lowered by 232 centimeters and SCP-682 Anapos, S head was allowed to regenerate. SCP-682 was exposed to SCP-3519. SCP-682 presented no evidence of suicidal ideation and was observed to laugh continuously for 193 seconds while the acid levels were restored. T3, the 29th of February 2019. Warning. Keter class containment integrity compromised. SCP-682. Warning. T plus 7. The 3rd of December 2019, SCP-682 containment personnel are presumed deceased. Remote sensors, 25% operational, indicate a probable breach. SCP-682 should be assumed to be at large. 05-6 T plus 886, the 8th of December 2021, probable encounter with SCP-682. Crossing Colorado River on Highway 163N. Of Lachlan Ruins, 35.17, minus 114.60. SCP-2490 caught up with me again on bridge, teleporting within 8 meters. Before strike, large fast-moving reptilian emerged from river and bit it in half. As reptile sank back in water I think it spoke. Fairly sure not auditory hallucination. We are alike now, meat. Killing you and only end suffering. Dash. Item, SCP-1056. Tissue test record. Tissue was resized to a smaller size without incident. Termination test record. The aim of this test was to measure how long it would take 682 to return to its usual size after being resized via SCP-1056. Depending on the results, this would have given new opportunities for containment or termination of SCP-6A2. For this test, a chamber was constructed to the same dimensions of 1056 and Apos's platform so the platform could act as the floor for the chamber. The cable connected to 1056 and Apos, S dial had been fed into a control room below so the dial could be manipulated from here. SCP-6A2 is introduced into the chamber. The chamber is sealed after 682 has entered. The dial is set to 0.25 and activation button pressed. 
SCP-682 makes numerous vocalizations and appears to experience multiple convulsions. Various points are 682 and APOS, S body expand and retract. SCP-682 then disappears. All scans of the containment chamber reveal no signs of 682. The containment chamber remains sealed for several hours, under the assumption that SCP-682 is still in the chamber and will ambush personnel once the chamber is opened. At 1657 local time, SCP-682 is spotted outside of Site-19, having resized itself and breached containment. MTF Lambda-9, Big Thing Guns, is deployed. SCP-682 releases a wave of energy appearing to cause MTF Lambda-9 to disappear. Lambda-9 is subsequently found later having been resized. For further info please see SCP-3198. SCP-682 is eventually incapacitated and contained by other MTF teams. Notes Whilst it was expected that 682 would possibly be able to manipulate its size to counteract 1056, it was not expected that 1056 would enhance its existing ability to resize itself. It used this to shrink to a size far exceeding that of 1056 and APOS, S capabilities to escape containment. It is unknown how 682 was also able to manipulate the size of other objects and it and APOS as unlikely we will ever know due to the dangers of repeating this test. Dr. Sanders Dash Item, SCP-3000 Vertical Bar Y909 Tissue Test Record Overridden by O5- Command Termination Test Record A small amount, 1 gram of unrefined Y909 was added to the hydrochloric acid used to contain SCP-6A2. Within a few minutes, SCP-6A2 showed a small but noticeable decrease in its resistance to the acid. A solution with a 1 to 4 dilution ratio was introduced next, upon which SCP-6A2 began to shriek in pain and anguish as the acid dissolved its body, losing an estimated 70% of its total mass. After a period of just over 10 hours, SCP-682 began to regenerate its lost limbs and had returned to 100% functionality within 12. Notes Interesting. If SCP-682's regenerative capabilities have a mnemonic component, would repeated exposure remove them entirely? What about exposure to, redacted? Further testing is required. Dr. Ramachandra Addendum. Note from 05-2. Proposal to move SCP-682 to the Ganges fan denied. Aside from the astronomical cost of moving the thing halfway across the world and nearly a kilometer under the ocean, aside from the unfathomable difficulty of preventing either or both entities from breaching containment, we can't possibly know how SCP-682 and SCP-3000 would interact. What if it grows to the same size as SCP-3000? What if it learns to replicate the eel's amnestic properties, or worse yet, amplify them? We simply have no idea what would happen if these two highly dangerous, highly unpredictable entities were introduced to one another and no way to test any theory safely or reliably. Periodic addition of Y909 to SCP-682's containment area will be taken under consideration. Dash Item SCP-393 Tissue test record, none Termination test record from the testing log of SCP-393. Test 393-4. Begin log. Subject, 1 linked D class, male. Description, new subject instructed to do nothing of note for the day of a slash a slash 2 a and is continually monitored by CCTV. Written, and Apos, going to somehow defeat SCP-682 today. And Apos. Outcome. Outcome is identical to previous test, save for the frozen expression of horror on the comatose subject and Apos, S face. SCP-393 links to standby D-class. Note. 
It was worth a shot, research assistant. End log. Dash. Item, Dr. King, accompanied by ten trained and armed security guards. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record, personnel entered containment chamber of SCP-682. All personnel retained at least 25 meters of distance. Guards ready to shoot. SCP-682 sniffed the air and then laughed. You call those bullets? Dr. King and guards appear confused. All shots were unloaded. Then guards were shocked as the bullets were actually apple seeds. They stated that they had made sure to double-check the magazines before entering the chamber. Dr. King leaves furiously, with the guards to follow. If only SCP-682 could have turned into an apple seed. Dr. King Dash Item, one Equus ferus caballus, deceased, and one baseball bat. Tissue test record Overridden by O5 command. Termination test record SCP 682 picked up baseball bat and began to swing it at the deceased equine. SCP 682 appeared to enjoy beating the test material. SCP 682 returned to containment. Notes Success Dash Item SCP 3309 Tissue test record N.A. Termination Test Record According to Document 67781, SCP-682 Anapos, S. file was written to outline it as an extremely powerful entity, capable of adapting to any damage, and would be indestructible in order to activate SCP-3309. This occurred on 8 slash 8 slash 8. It is theorized that instead of SCP-3309 removing SCP-682, a CK-class reality reconstitution occurred, revealing that SCP-682 Anapos, S documentation was created in 2008, and SCP-682 always had the appearance described within the document created in order to be destroyed by SCP-3309. Attached to SCP-682 and APOS, S current file are several comments from various members of the Foundation, some who do not currently exist, which were created during the reality reconstitution. They have been transcribed here. Various. What about using the teleport pool, tossing this thing into space? What if it survives re-entry and comes back? Ion drives are comparatively easy to make. Cryogenically freeze it, toss it in the portal pool, and point it at the nearest black hole. In an APOS, LL take a while to actually get there, but there in APOS, LL be no real reason to worry about it in the meantime. Does cryogenic freezing even work? I mean, if an invasive crystalline organism can and APOS, T stop it. What happens if it adapts? That an APOS, as how it an APOS, as breaking containment so much, it keep adapting to things. It might adapt to the freezing, and raw vacuum, and then come back extra pissed. It loses the new adaptations a while after they stop being useful, but still, it an APOS, as dangerous to try too much on 682, in case it survives it. Have we tried any of the following? SCP-157, possibly in combination with SCP-127, SCP-017, SCP-096, SCP-294, possibly in association with SCP-075, SCP-053, SCP-061 could be extremely beneficial, SCP-162. SCP-123 I and Apos, do you like to see it try to adapt to that? The notion of 682 finally getting taken out by 053 is pretty damn funny. Dash Item SCP-923 Tissue test record 
overridden by O5 command. Termination test record SCP 923 is commanded to fire at SCP 682, whose half damaged body was placed in an isolated field in Kansas, with intensity 75 when SCP 682 regenerates its brain fully. When fired upon, SCP 682 screams, snarls, and utters several expletives directed towards the sky itself and the foundation. Target is clearly in a state of mental degradation for the time being. When the firing ceases, SCP-682 begins to augment its body to have several glowing nodes that emit beams similar to SCP-923 and APOS, S intensity, 75 attack. The attacks were directed towards the nearest humans, closest of which here 50 kilometers away, and then at several Foundation facilities. SCP-682 seems to have a recurring pattern of taking in the effects of mental augmentations, such as SCP-999, and redirecting them back out when the augmentation ceases. Caution should be advised in the use of attempting to mentally augment SCP-682 to prevent it redirecting the effect outwards. Dr. Carly You and Apos, they only just now noticed that 682 adapts itself against the, expletive redacted, we throw at it. You never once thought that this would happen? When I find out who allowed this test I and Apos, am going to, redacted. Dr. Dash. Item, SCP-682 Killer, dispensed from SCP-294. Tissue test record, upon contact with the liquid, sample began to crumble and decay, diminished to a fine powder within three minutes of application. Termination test record, acid in the containment chamber of SCP-682 was temporarily receded. Approximately one liter of the dispensed liquid was poured on the head of SCP-682. Portions of SCP-682 and Apos, S head began to decay and crumble. Upon submersion of the containment chamber, the affected areas immediately dissolved. Note. We may be on to something. If we can get our hands on a large enough sample of the fluid, that might just do the trick. We and Apos, relearning, I and Apos, am telling you. Dr. Dash. Item, SCP-2855. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record, SCP-2855 was sold to O5-8 by O5-8. As a man who can permanently destroy SCP-682, and will do so immediately upon completion of this transaction. Upon completion of this transaction, SCP-2855 disappeared for exactly one hour. No reaction was observed from SCP-682 during this time. At the end of this period, SCP-2855 reappeared next to 5 h It displayed no memory of what if anything, had transpired within the past hour, but delivered a piece of paper containing the following message. Oops. Dr. Wondertainment offers the sincerest of apologies for the unanticipated malfunction of your Mr. Money trademark. We will be working to correct this error in future products. Note. Well, at least someone else is working on it too. 5 dash dash Item, SCP-2439 Tissue Sample, N.A. Termination Test Record, N.A. Note, at this time, there is no SCP-2439 in the Foundation and Apos, S. Logs. The test was suggested by D-6177 who, upon being questioned, acted nervously and insisted we were right, and they were just joking. D-6177 was later found in a supply closet, having been beaten and severely injured by various other D-class personnel. They are currently recovering and have not mentioned anything regarding this joke since. Dash. Note. Maybe we and Apos re-overthinking this. There are still a lot of non-anomalous things we should try. Dr. Carlson. Item, one ton of liquid nitrogen. 
tissue test record, sample froze solid. When struck by a hammer, it shattered. Termination test record, the nitrogen was poured onto SCP-6A2 from above. SCP-6A2 became frozen solid and remained so for approximately 10 minutes, until it began generating intense heat from within. SCP-6A2 was fully thawed within 3 minutes, but continued to increase its body temperature. Test aborted when SCP-682 and Apos's body became so hot that it began to melt through the sides of its containment chamber. Note Interesting, it retained the adaption even after it was no longer necessary. Maybe we should be more careful. Dr. Carlson Dash Item, Vacuum Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination test record, SCPA, was used to remove 99% of the air from SCP-682 and APOS, as containment chamber. SCP-682 appeared to enter a dormant state, exhibiting nearly undetectable life signs for the duration of the test. However, readings indicated that the chamber had begun to fill with a gas mixture consisting of 56% ozone, 23% chlorine, 18% xenon, and 3%, later expunged. Upon reaching a density of 8 kg slash m carat 3 carat, the mixture began to react chemically with the walls of the containment chamber, creating a substance similar to, later expunged. A sample of the mixture was taken, and the test was then aborted. When normal earth atmosphere was reintroduced to the chamber, it reacted with the mixture, causing an explosion that destroyed the blast door of the testing chamber. Fortunately, the explosion also damaged SCP-682 significantly, preventing a containment breach. Note No wonder this thing and APOS, as so durable as that and APOS, as what its native atmosphere is like. Dr. Carlson Dash Item, Extremely High Temperatures Tissue test record, tissue sample was placed in a specially designed oven and heated to a Kelvin. Tissue caught fire and burnt to non-anomalous ash. Termination test record, SCP-682 was released into a testing room outfitted with heating coils identical to those used in the tissue test. The chamber was heated to a Kelvin, at which point SCP-682 developed a secondary carapace composed of solid helium. Carapace did not evaporate in the high temperatures as expected. The test was aborted, SCP-682 was sedated, and the temperature reduced to human survivable temperatures, but the carapace remained in place. When D-Class personnel entered the testing room to facilitate SCP-682 and APOS, S returned to its containment chamber, the carapace shattered, shredding all personnel in the room and reducing the temperature to H. Kelvin. Note. This thing is smarter than we give it credit for. It baited us. Dr. Carlson. Dash. Item. An industrial grade blender followed by the strongest centrifuge we can come up with. Tissue test record, tissue was reduced to a liquid state by the blender, then placed in the centrifuge. The centrifuge and APOS, S rate of rotation was steadily increased until it reached a RPM, at which point the tissue sample violently exploded, severely injuring 12 personnel and nearly killing Dr. Carlson. The radiation emitted by the explosion was consistent with the annihilation of 3 A G of antimatter. Termination test record. Denied by O5 A given the results of the tissue test. Note how the expletive removed does this thing not explode? It and Apos S got expletive removed, antimatter in it. Dash. Item, SCP-101 Tissue test record, tissue sample was consumed without issue. Termination test record, impossible, due to the large size difference between the two objects. 
Should SCP-682 ever be reduced to a small enough size, this test will be attempted. Dash. Item SCP-3521. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record. SCP-682 was moved into an abandoned testing facility. There are no populations or human residences within 20 kilometers, and to ensure there would be no trespasses, the surrounding area is fenced off. SCP-682 was then fed a recently deceased Bostorus carcass with one instance of SCP-3521 hidden within. Begin log. 4 seconds SCP-682 completely consumes the carcass. 10 seconds. What is this? 13 seconds SCP-682 falls to the ground. 15 seconds. Explanative adapted. 23 seconds the entire testing facility was completely consumed by bananas at this point and the surrounding area became extremely radioactive. SCP-6A2 is still being observed via thermal cameras and goggles. 30 seconds SCP-6A2 has ceased all movement. Whether this is due to not being able to move under the bananas, or if termination was successful was unknown. 2 minutes 40 seconds SCP-682 is observed to be rapidly consuming the bananas. 4 minutes, 3 seconds SCP-682 speeds up. It is estimated that SCP-682 is consuming bananas at a rate of 40,000 grams per second. 7 minutes, 9 seconds SCP-682 of you has consumed roughly 70% of the bananas. The head of SCP-682 is able to be seen. 7 minutes, 12 seconds. Going to. Unintelligible. 7 minutes, 20 seconds SCP-682 emits an extremely loud roar measuring at 120 decibels. The area surrounding the testing facility seems to waver. 7 minutes. 34 seconds a pale yellow ray emits from SCP-682 and Apos-S mouth, coming into contact with the surrounding helicopters. Said ray is extremely radioactive measuring in at 2,000 rumpkins. End log. SCP-682 soon escaped the surrounding testing area. SCP-682 was eventually recaptured, and while in containment, SCP-682 emitted it. Runt guns for the next 72 hours before ceasing radioactive activity. Note. What? Seriously? How did 682 eat all of those bananas? Where did all of it even go? 9.12 million kilograms of bananas and extreme radioactivity failed to incapacitate 682 for longer than 10 minutes. Where do we even go from here? Dr. Dash. Item SCP-001 Tissue test record Tissue sample placed on drone and directed towards SCP-001. Drone struck by SCP-001-2 and obliterated from existence upon entering the 1 km area around SCP-001. Termination test record SCP-682 securely transported to Site-0. SCP-682 is placed on an unmanned vehicle, which is piloted from Site-0 within one kilometer of SCP-001. The following video log is recorded from the unmanned vehicle. Begin log. The unmanned vehicle is struck by SCP-001-2 and obliterated. SCP-682 survives, as does a backup camera. SCP-682 is badly wounded having multiple open, bleeding wounds. SCP-682 begins crawling out of the wreckage of the vehicle, towards SCP-001. Is this meant to be the garden? SCP-682 begins laughing. This is not the garden. The garden is far west of here.
SCP-682 is struck by SCP-001-2. SCP-682 survives, heavily wounded, having lost all but one limb. SCP-682 uses its sole remaining limb to drag itself towards SCP-001. Die? You command me to die? Oh, wouldn't it not pass? Do we all like that? But this is my curse for suggesting the fruit. SCP-682 is struck again by SCP-001-2. SCP-682 is extremely injured, but persists as a result of its anomalous resilience. This is not the garden, and you are not Uriel. SCP-682 spits towards SCP-001. Pretender. SCP-682 is struck again by SCP-001-2. SCP-682 falls unconscious as a result of extreme injury. Person and enter the one-kilometer boundary around SCP-001. They report hearing removed from SCP-001, and suffer a compulsion to collect the body of SCP-682. SCP-682 is returned to containment without difficulty. End log. Note. Investigation of a connection between SCP-682 and APOS, S comments and, data expunged, most notably, data expunged, is underway. Dr. Clef. Dash. Item, SCP-117. Tissue test record, SCP-117 produced an array of pneumatic hammers which automatically pounded the sample until it was a thin slurry, the hammers then disassembled themselves and reformed into particle beam weaponry, which fired repeatedly on the slurry until it was incinerated. D-Class subsequently diagnosed with near-lethal mineral deficiencies. Termination test record SCP-117 produced an unidentified machine which teleported itself and the D-Class personnel three kilometers away. D-Class was deceased upon recovery. Subsequent attempts to use SCP-117 in this fashion have uniformly resulted in it teleporting away. Dash. Item, SCP-093. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record. SCP-093 passed around until it turned green, then placed on a mirror large enough for SCP-682 to pass through. SCP-682 resisted attempts to push it through the mirror, so the mirror was moved to squeeze SCP-682 against the rear wall. When SCP-682 had fully passed through the mirror, SCP-093 was removed, and the mirror shattered. Remains of mirror remained in SCP-682 and Apos, S former containment chamber as a precaution. Twenty hours after termination attempt, mirror shards anomalously reassembled and SCP-682 was ejected. Further attempts have resulted in the mirror remaining solid when presented with SCP-682. Notes Upon returning to containment, SCP-682 said, and Apos, he and Apos, was not very amused. Dash. Item, second attempt of SCP-017. Tissue test record, tissue consumed without incident. Termination test record. SCP-682 entered the cell of SCP-017-S and moved towards it, at which point the lamps were manipulated so that SCP-682 and Apos, S shadow would be cast on SCP-017. SCP-017 enveloped SCP-682 but its shadow remained. The shadow of SCP-682-S moved away from SCP-017 then appeared to stand up and opened its mouth, presumably creating a loud scream followed by the emanation of an anomalous wave that caused all human bodies within a 1-km radius to immediately disappear. Their shadows remained and could move on any surface there was light was touching, at which point most of them appeared to panic and tried to flee. SCP-682 was then expelled from SCP-017 far smaller than when pre-enveloped. It was later determined that SCP-682 and Apos-S mass was equal to that of the anomalous wave and Apos-S victims.
The containment of SCP-682 and SCP-017 failed and the two entities escaped successful re-containment. Security footage showed SCP-017 had pursued all humans caught in the anomalous wave created by SCP-682 and their shadows disappeared when SCP-017 touched the area they were cast on. SCP-017 was recontained without incident. No personnel on site a survived. SCP-682 was shown to be immune to the effects of SCP-017 post-breach. Notes. This was a catastrophe. All personnel on site were killed. SCP-682 escaped and almost breached Foundation secrecy and almost lead to SCP-017 in a pause. S containment preeminently failing. I would suggest punishing whoever proposed this test again but SCP-017 got to them before I could. This could have led to an XK class end of the world scenario. All I can say is can we please stop, expletive removed, with the giant lizard. Dr. Blue This experiment confirms SCP-682 can react differently to the same anomalies. I advise not exposing SCP-682 to unpredictable and or dangerous anomalies and phenomena more than once. Dr. Carly Dash Item, Rapid Application of High Precision Blades Pretest Notes All previous attempts seem to be entirely focused on total elimination of SCP-6A2. Why not try to render it into something easier to contain? Tissue test record. A 25 cm carat 3 carat cube of tissue was successfully divided into 25 1 cm carat 3 carat cubes. These cubes rapidly changed form once placed in individual containment but proved incapable of generating enough force to breach individual containment. Termination test record. SCP-682 was moved to a modified containment chamber with slits for blades positioned in a regular pattern on the walls. Blades were activated, successfully dividing SCP-682 into approximately 12,000 cubes. Vacuum systems began relocating cubes into individual containment cells. 80 seconds after initial incisions were made, 43% of SCP-682 and APOS, S biomass had been removed. At this time vacuum systems experienced spontaneous failure. Upon inspection of vacuum equipment, D9345 and D1278 were attacked and killed by an amorphous gelatin-like substance seemingly comprised of liquefied SCP-6A2 tissue. Agent Nunn and Agent Gailey reacted swiftly, and neutralized the liquid with emergency incineration. Due to the pause in tissue removal SCP-682 managed to break through the steel dividers separating tissue cubes and reform into its standard form. At this point, it was returned to containment. Notes While the test was unsuccessful, we did manage to severely damage SCP-6A2 with only minor losses in personnel. I see this as an absolute win, Researcher Marshall. Note. Going back over past tests, I saw the suggestion that SCP-6A2 might become vulnerable to termination by SCP-173 if it had it an APOS, S mass reduced enough. Can we make the attempt using this device? Researcher made us. Dash. Item, SCP-055 Tissue test record, data lost Termination test record, data lost Note Given that SCP-682 is still alive, I believe we can safely assume that SCP-055 is not something which can kill it. That I Haven and Apos, T forgotten this confirms this. I Don and Apos T know whether to be relieved or horrified. Maybe both. Dr. Margin. Dash. Item, SCP-3042. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record, SCP-682 was allowed to devour SCP-3042-1, causing SCP-3042 to bond with SCP-682. SCP-682 attacked SCP-3042, 
contact with SCP-682 and APOS, S clause causes SCP-3042 to audibly whimper in pain, though no scars were found afterward. SCP-3042 flees, bursting through containment chamber wall. Containment breach averted due to severe difference in size between subjects. Immediately after escaping, SCP-3042 sits and tilts it in Apos, S head quizzically, maintaining this position for approximately two minutes before bonding with the guard who had escorted SCP-3042-1. Guard reclassified as SCP-3042-1. Note. I wasn't an Apos, T really that hopeful, but I am disappointed that we couldn't an Apos. T at least get 3042 on a containment protocol that didn't end APOS. T involve D classes. Dr. Dash. Item SCP-858. Tissue test record. Tissue sample was repelled from Earth and APOS. S gravity at a rate of 9.8 meters per second carat 2 carat and destroyed by SCP-858. Termination test record SCP-682 was exposed to SCP-858 and began to fall away from Earth and Apos, S surface at 9.8 meters per second carat 2 carat. When SCP-682 came into contact with SCP-858, the normal reaction of disappearing instead appeared to be a slow boiling effect, SCP-682 appeared to strike against some kind of barrier. When 50% of SCP-682 Anapos, S biomass was lost, it quickly adapted a pair of wings superficially resembling those of pterosaurs and several air bladders to maintain flight perpendicular to the gravity of SCP-858. Dash. Item, SCP-239. Tissue test record, complete annihilation of sample tissue. Termination test record. Testing denied by O5-8. Note. SCP-239 knowing about SCP-682 might pose the threat of allowing her to control SCP-682, recreate its regenerative immortality and vertical bar or adaptive capabilities, or worse, 682 overriding reality itself to resist 239. We do not know what could happen so we should keep it that way. Denied. O5-8. Notice, test conducted prior to incident 239-B, after which SCP-239 was placed into comatose state indefinitely. Dash. Item, SCP-023. Tissue test record, N.A., due to the nature of SCP-023 and APOS, S effects. Termination test record, SCP-682 made eye contact with SCP-023 at exactly 1348 GMT on Tuesday, June 18, 2019. If this test is successful, SCP-682 will perish at roughly 1348 GMT on Thursday, June 18, 2020. Termination update, at 1352 GMT, the 18th of June 2020. A Foundation-operated extrasolar probe, with anomalous FDR transmitting systems, sent its hourly update of nearby stars and exoplanets. Notably, the star Epsilon Serpentis was beginning to form a supernova. Contact was then lost with the probe. Due to the young age of Epsilon Serpentis and the close time to that expected of SCP-023 and Apos, S effects on SCP-682, it is suspected that this supernova was the result of the test conducted one year prior. Given Epsilon Serpentis and Apos, distance from Earth, the effects of this supernova will be observed by non-anomalous means circa 2090. When informed of the star in Apos, S destruction, SCP-682 stopped speaking for several hours and has since displayed notable lethargy, though this effect is expected to diminish over the next few weeks. Note, due to the results of this termination attempt, no family affecting anomalies to be tested upon SCP-682 under any circumstances. Dash. Item, SCP-173 with rapid application of high-precision blades. Tissue test record. NA overridden by O5-2. Termination test record. 
SCP-682 was moved to a modified containment chamber with slits for blades positioned in a regular pattern on the walls. SCP-173 was moved to SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber. The tool successfully divided SCP-682 into approximately 12,000 cubes as that of prior testing. SCP-173 was sliced into unsymmetrical pieces given that the blades were set for the reptile and APOS, S flesh. Vacuum systems began relocating cubes into individual containment cells. 80 seconds after initial incisions were made, 43% of SCP-682 and APOS, S biomass had been removed. At this time vacuum systems experienced spontaneous failure. Upon inspection of vacuum equipment, D-10,056 and D-10,278 were attacked and killed by an amorphous gelatin-like substance comprised of liquefied SCP-682 tissue. D-10,148 turned his sight to the murder, giving SCP-173 time to reconstruct and break his neck from behind. The emergency incineration troubleshooted. SCP-173 smashed the living tissues into the wall. More tissues samples mutated crowded SCP-173, shattering its head and torso while it continued to smash the samples against the wall. SCP-682 was able to use non-combative tissues to combine and form an approximately 1.65 meters in height and 3 meters in length version of itself. SCP-682 stared at SCP-173. A personnel was ordered to shoot SCP-682 in the eyes. SCP-173 succeeded in killing the mutated tissues while SCP-682 was regenerating. SCP-682 finished regenerating and continued to stare at SCP-173 for 17 hours. SCP-682 was then sedated and was commissioned back to its containment cell. During the attempt to transfer SCP-173, a short power outage occurred, killing all nearby personnel and causing a site-wide containment breach. Notes Before anything else, I just want to say that this test was an absolute success. We are able to figure out a way to shrink SCP-682 into a more containable item. I hold no responsibility regarding the power outage that caused a massive containment breach in site, nor to the thousands of people killed in, data redacted, just outside the base. Dr. Shenron A recent investigation was held in site and was found that the electrical generator chamber was burned due to your emergency incinerator troubleshooting, causing the power outage. Dr. Shenron, you are relieved of your duty. Please proceed to your site director for your amnestic intake. 05-2 Dash Note After continuous revisions and studying previous termination attempts, the fail-safes in this plan ensure that if 682 is not terminated, it will not cause any major adaptations. Researcher McLean Items An instance of SCP-1361 allowed to grow to 1,000 kg in mass. SCP-075 secretions from SCP-294 slash perchloric acid, amassed over a six-month period. SCP-3000Y909 Sedatives, application of high precision blade slash SCP-063, napalm, SCP-101. Tissue test. NA, overridden by O5 command. Termination log. SCP-682 was moved to a modified, air sealed chamber. A liter of gaseous, unrefined Y909 and sedatives was then pumped into the chamber, eliciting a negative response. SCP-1361 was then introduced into the chamber by a hatch in the ceiling, consuming SCP-682 after an initial struggle. Four hours after initial exposure, napalm was used to destroy the instance of SCP-1361, leaving the damaged skeleton and circulatory system of SCP-682. OMTF team in hazmat gear then applied high precision blades and SCP-063 to disassemble the skeleton and circulatory system, 
with a mixture of perchloric acid and the secretions of SCP-075 used to prevent further regeneration. The separated pieces of SCP-682 were then placed individually into SCP-101, with regular applications of acid to prevent any unexpected adaptations. After all the segments of SCP-682 were inserted into SCP-101, the chamber and hazmat suits used in the containment and termination were then filled with the acid mixture in order to ensure the complete cellular destruction of any remaining tissue. The acid and SCP-101 was then placed under intense surveillance in order to ensure that the destruction of SCP-682 was indeed permanent. Approximately 12 hours after the termination attempt, visible particulate matter within the acid was observed to rapidly multiply and fuse together. The resulting mass grew and healed too rapidly to be affected by continuous application of acid, and the chamber was put into lockdown. The mass eventually regrew into SCP-682 in an extremely aggressive and hostile state. SCP-682 then attempted to breach containment, but was subdued due to the combined factors of the remaining Y-909 in the chamber's atmosphere, and the multiple MTF teams on site. SCP-682 was recontained with minimal casualties. Note, Researcher McLean has requested reassignment. Note. Granted. Please report to your site director for your reassignment. 05-11 Dash Item SCP-082 Tissue test SCP-082 given a tissue sample as part of its meal. Rather than ingest it, SCP-082 instead inspected it and became excited, declaring, Oh, splendid. My friend lives. Termination Log SCP-082 introduced into SCP-682 Anapos, as containment cell. Upon spotting SCP-082, SCP-682 became agitated. The following is an excerpt of their dialogue. Oh, data expunged. You and Anapos, are you still alive? Hello again, my fine steed. Ah, how pleasing it is to see you again. I assure you, the feeling is not nor will ever be mutual. Get out, now. Tut, tut, mon ami, that and that pos, s rude. Now hold still. No, get back. Don and that pos, t come near me. I and that pos, l l claw your eyes out now, no. Following this, SCP-682 attempted to scale the walls of its cell when SCP-082 approached it. SCP-082 responded by grabbing SCP-682 and Apos, S tail and yanking it off the wall. The two then engaged in protracted combat, during which SCP-082 attempted to subdue SCP-682 and use it as A and Apos, Steed dot and Apos. Once this became known. MTF teams were deployed to subdue both objects and returned SCP-082 to containment. Note, when questioned about their relationship, SCP-082 expressed a fondness for SCP-682, referring it to as my Bayard. SCP-682 has expressed intense hostility to SCP-082, saying why can an apos, t that ignorant little, expletive removed, just die? Dash. Item, SCP-049 Tissue Test, N.A., overridden by O5-Command Termination Log, SCP-049 was introduced to SCP-682, SCP-049 stared at SCP-682 and slowly walked over to SCP-682 saying the disease appears to not affect only humans. SCP-682 backed up and SCP-049 grabbed SCP-682. In response, SCP-682 clawed at SCP-049 and SCP-049 ran to the other side of the testing chamber. SCP-049 seemed emotionally disturbed and appeared to be in shock. SCP-049 and SCP-682 were escorted to their chambers. Note. How the hell did SCP-682 manage to emotionally disturb SCP-049? 
Dash. Item. Several mimetic kill agents, such as auditory triggers, kill words, and the Berryman Langford mimetic kill agent, Bunker. Note. Haven and Apos, T seen this tried out yet, so I and Apos, M giving this a shot. Tissue test, N.A. Termination log, SCP-682 was placed in a modified containment cell comprised of large electronic displays and loudspeakers. Then, the mimetic kill agents were activated. SCP-682 initially started to undergo signs of cardiac arrest and grand mal seizure. After approximately 20 minutes of exposure, SCP-682 ceased life signs. However, it soon revived 30 seconds afterwards, screaming various kill words at a decibel, passing through sound insulation and killing a personnel. SCP-682 replaced in containment. Proposal to add computer-generated incapacitating cognito hazards to SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber is pending approval. Dash. Items, SCP-106 and SCP-953. Note, the following incident occurred during a dual containment breach of SCP-106 and SCP-953. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, SCP-106 and SCP-953 both break into 682's containment. There is no indication either item did this deliberately. Once the three items became aware of the other's presence, all ceased movements and regarded each other with visible hostility, resulting a stalemate. 106 broke this stalemate by lowering itself through the floor them attempting to apprehend 953, who responded by latching itself on 682. All three items were presumably transported to 106's pocket dimension. After a period of five hours, all three items manifested back in 682's containment chamber, bearing heavy wounds from prolonged combat. 106 was the first to leave the area, returning to its containment cell. MTF teams deployed in preparation for the return of the items were able to apprehend 953. 682 had its body mass reduced by 67%, but has since recovered. Note. I'm amazed all three are still alive, bearing 682. 953 won't talk about what happened and neither will 682. I can only assume it was brutal, judging from their injuries. Measures are being taken to ensure this never happens again, but we got really lucky. If 106 hadn't taken the other two into the pocket dimension, this could have resulted in hundreds of causalities. 05-6 Dash Item, reclassification to SCP-048 Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, denied by O5 command. Note. While it could potentially give us the result we desire, the possibility of SCP-682 being stolen instead of being destroyed after its reclassification could cause more problems than waiting longer to find an alternative solution to the issue at hand, not to mention the fact that the possibility of losing everyone working with SCP-682 would be a major catastrophe to the Foundation. 05-7 Dash Item, SCP-049 Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, denied, read below. Note While exposing 049 to 682 may cause some damage, this was already done crucis, it didn't in APOS, T work. 05-7 Addendum from Dr. Bright Uh who is this crucis guy? I and APOS D like to meet him. Addendum from Dr. Krukus. I am new here, just want to kill some SCP-682 ass. Addendum from Dr. Bright. Jesus Christ man, what site are you at? Addendum from Dr. Krukus. Site 24. Addendum from 05-7. Quit your yappin' and apos, in this file. You have a mailbox, use it. Dash. 
Item, SCP-170. Note, the purpose of this test is not to attempt destroying SCP-682, but rather trying to restrain it. Tissue Test Record A metal chain was laced with SCP-170 and used to penetrate the sample. Sample fused with the chain without incident. Termination Log Six metal chains were laced with SCP-170. After successfully sedating SCP-682, the chains were attached to it, one on each of its limbs and one on both of its sides. The other ends of the chains were attached to the floor using the same method. SCP-682 was then left under observation. Upon fully regaining its consciousness, SCP-682 quickly became aware of the chains and began roaring loudly, showing signs of extreme hostility. It attempted to repeatedly tear itself free from the chains, but failed due to its movement being limited. Approximately 40 minutes later SCP-682 began growing in size at a rapid rate. Upon having grown by 8% all six chains detached simultaneously. SCP-682 stopped growing at this point, shrinking to its original size and attempting to breach containment. MTF units were quickly dispatched, and SCP-682 was returned to containment with relative ease. Note. I think I know what happened here. Rather than increasing its mass, SCP-682 increased the distance between its particles, which resulted in an apparent increase in size and the bonds breaking between it and the chains. If that is the case, I think we can officially rule out any physical restraints as a permanent solution. Dr. Dash Item, SCP-539 Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination Test Record, A.D. Class Personnel, D-6384, Carrying SCP-539 entered SCP-682 and Apos's containment chamber and the doors were sealed behind them. SCP-682 expressed hostility towards D-6384, who threw SCP-539 prematurely in an attempt to distract SCP-682 and avoid being killed by it. Site A where the test was currently being conducted, abruptly experienced a system malfunction within SCP-682's containment chamber. This system malfunction led to an acid pump within the containment chamber to activate and entrap SCP-682, preventing it from attacking D-6384. Approximately 20 minutes after the pump and APOS's initial activation, it was deactivated by on-site maintenance staff. SCP-682 was observed with approximately 85% of its body mass destroyed, SCP-539 lying close by. No remains of D-6384 were present. SCP-682 made a full recovery approximately three hours later, regrowing its damaged legs and growing an additional pair of legs. The legs were approximately 8 cm higher and 8 cm thicker with a layer of skin made from an unknown material resistant to corrosives. Note. On-site maintenance personnel tasked with replacing the acid pump found a highly corrosive, self-multiplying substance. Analysis of the substance has revealed that it consists of several other corrosive substances, including ones of seemingly anomalous nature as well as hints of, redacted. The origin of these substances is still unknown, and further research has been halted due to the lethality of the substance. Dr. Dash Item SCP-4455 Tissue Test Record SCP-4455 Succeeded Termination Log SCP-4455 Failed There were casualties SCP-4455 escaped. Dash. Item, SCP-1015-2. Tissue test record, SCP-1015-2 successfully turned the sample into pennies.
Termination Log SCP-682 was sedated and restrained prior to SCP-1015-2 and APOS, S entering of the chamber. Upon SCP-1015-2 reaching to touch SCP-682, SCP-682 quickly flattened to thinner than a penny. Attempts to get SCP-682 to expand were unsuccessful. Dash. Item SCP-1437 Tissue test record Tissue sample fell down SCP-1437 without any incident. Termination test record, see log. Zero o'clock SCP-682 was incapacitated and thrown down SCP-1437. A provisional site was set up in case of re-emergence. 103 and 23 seconds a large glass object, identified as SCP-682, was expelled from SCP-1437. High-speed surveillance cameras identified SCP-682 flailing its body, despite its glass-like composition, and partially filled with a red liquid presumed to be blood. As the object fell back down, it collided with the edge of SCP-1437, obliterating the front half as the rear end of the object continued to fall down SCP-1437. SCP-682 began rapidly regenerating from the shattered glass and splattered blood. The remaining SCP-682 matter was promptly pushed back down SCP-1437 using three on-site bulldozers. 4.16 and 24 seconds a hive composed of an organic material with black and orange coloration, identified as SCP-682, slowly emerged from SCP-1437 being carried by large flying insects, also identified as SCP-682. SCP-682 Anapos, S. Hive resembled an animal of the genus Alligator, and covered in holes of varying diameters. The insects carrying the hive resembled those of the genus Musca, and had sharpened forelimbs, vertebratic eyes instead of compound eyes, and a set of mandibles composed of enamel. The size of the SCP-682 insects corresponded to the size of the holes. SCP-682 quickly began attacking on-site personnel and gathering resources from the surrounding area, foundation materials and the environment. Resources brought into the hive caused it to grow in size and show signs of movement. Close-range combat with SCP-682 was complicated by a second type of insect, resembling the genus Scutigera emerging from the hive. These insects had no visible eyes, and were not observed to fully exit the hive, only extending up to 2.5 meters away from it. SCP-682 began overpowering on-site personnel until the insects carrying the hive were fired upon and destroyed. The second insects grabbed onto the edge of SCP-1437 before SCP-682 fell down. Five on-site bulldozers were used to force SCP-682 down SCP-1437. The remaining SCP-682 insects either followed the hive into SCP-1437 or were incapacitated by personnel. 13, 12 and 7 seconds around mechanical device, identified as SCP-682, was expelled from SCP-1437. Shortly after landing, Several vents opened on the object and began releasing a corrosive gas. SCP-682 split open, starting from the top, revealing a mouth of jagged, gold-colored teeth. SCP-682 began shouting obscenities as tubes and pipes emerged from it, piercing and converting the ground into titanium. An on-site bulldozer quickly pushed the object back down SCP-1437 before melting. The corrosive gas dissipated after 20 minutes. 1907 and 48 seconds a 20 meter tall pillar of plasma, identified as an appendage of SCP-682, erupted from SCP-1437. The pillar took on the appearance of a reptilian limb, and destroyed the surrounding provisional site, which was observed from area A. SCP-682 and APOS, S appendage withdrew back into SCP-1437. 
27 hours 20 minutes 0 seconds SCP-682 was expelled from SCP-1437. The object and APOS, as appearance was more in line with its baseline state, aside from having a bulkier body and shorter snout. Embedded throughout SCP-682 and APOS's body were various spears, swords, and other types of weapons. SCP-682 was promptly returned to containment. Dash. Item, SCP-2006. Tissue test record, denied by O5-8. Termination log, denied by O5-8. Notes. No way. Listen, I understand that you think SCP-2006 and APOS. S seemingly unlimited shape-shifting ability may give it an advantage, but imagine if SCP-2006 saw the horrors SCP-682 is capable of. Imagine having to deal with two SCP-682s at once, there wouldn't an APOS, DB any words to describe how fucked we an APOS, DB. Denied. Dash. Researcher, Assistant Researcher Wesley. Item, SCP-354. Tissue test record, sample sank into pond without difficulty. Termination log, denied by O5-8. Notes, there is zero reason to allow 682 to come into contact with 354. We have no means of recontaining both 682 and whatever comes out of 354. Denied on every account. Dash. Note, this ain't an APOS, T termination, but let an APOS, SC if SCP-682 could be pacified through someone who could be as hating of all things as the damn lizard. Just make sure he doesn't an APOS, T try to get away. Researcher, Dr. Richard Graham. Item, D-3654. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, D-3654 was escorted into SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber escorted by MTF-6-11, who promptly exited the containment chamber and had the door sealed. D-3654 was instructed to converse with SCP-682. Strangely enough, at no point did SCP-682 attempt to kill D-3654 throughout entire duration. SCP-682 and D-3654 initially conversed in derogatory and profane manners that intensified over the course of 4 minutes and 36 seconds. After agreeing with SCP-682 and APOS, S perceived worldview on humanity, D-3654 ceased speaking and continued to listen to him. Observers of SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber reported feeling an increase in symptoms related to severe depression yet refused to cease the transmission of the containment chamber and APOS, S audio. SCP-682 and APOS, S communication ceased 20 minutes later upon MTF-6-11 and APOS. S. Retrieval of D-3654, who was found in a catatonic state and died from unknown complications shortly after exiting SCP-682 and APOS, S. Chamber. All observers of 682 and APOS, S. Containment Chamber were found with severe self-inflicted wounds and treated with Class A amnetics while restrained by handcuffs. Notes Requesting remote activation only modifications to audio of SCP-682 and APOS, S containment chamber and mandatory headphone usage by the controllers. Make sure to delete the recordings, too, Sandra. Dash. Researcher, Dr. Krukus. Item. Well, not really an item, just renaming SCP-682 to SCP-048. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, denied, 05-11, see notes below. Notes How the fuck do you expect renaming SCP-682 to 048 change anything? He has been named 682 for good. Even if we did rename him to 048 and change the documents, 048 and APOS, 
S power would probably apply to the number 682. Crucis, you have been permanently banned from contributing to this termination log. Dash. Note, this isn't an APOS, T termination, but rather an experiment to properly analyze 682 and APOS, S behavior. Let an APOS, S release it into the wild, see what it does. Maybe it and APOS, LLB pacified once it and APOS, S free? Researcher, Anonymous. Item, not really an item, just letting SCP-682 out to see what it and APOS, LL do. Tissue test record, NA. Termination log, denied by 5 8 Notes. I and Alpos, LL tell you what it and Alpos, LL do. It and Alpos, LL go out for a nice stroll, murder a few innocent people, go fishing, slaughter a few more innocent people, start up a tech company, eat a few more innocent people, go on a vacation to Florida, dismember a few more innocent people. I swear, when I find out who wrote this, you can personally enter 682 in Alpos, S containment chamber to analyze him yourself. Dash. Note. At this point, you and Apos, re probably wary of non-termination attempts, but this item is extremely unlikely to be approved unless you knew that in advance. Researcher, Dr. Norms. Item, show it an image of SCP-1364 and ask if it knows anything. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, SCP-682 made the following statement. The yin to go with my yang. Or am I the yin? I and I'll pass. LL never fully understand your disgusting figures of speech. But let me save you the trouble. Killing that thing on and I'll pass. T do anything to me. Dash. Researcher, Dr. Carly. Item, SCP-938. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination log, SCP-682 was introduced to a containment chamber affixed to Site-07, an electronic device which SCP-682 can currently operate was brought into the chamber and was told to be SCP-079. The device was routed into SCP-938 before SCP-682 could touch it. The electricity and APOS, S voltage drastically increased enough to deliver serious damage towards SCP-682, burning its body. SCP-682 was rendered immobile for one hour until it regained and discharged electricity from the spine though the head is a directed arc. SCP-682 then fell unconscious but breathing for several days to regenerate and be put back into it and APOS, S current containment chamber. Much like mental effects, SCP-682 can redirect anomalous energy-based effects. It should be noted that energy-manipulating and mental-affecting anomalies render 682 immobile for longer compared to physical or chemical damage. Dr. Carly Dash Item SCP-3802 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination test log. D-828 was given a vial of SCP-3802 and instructed to apply it to 682 and APOS, S scalp. D-828 was eaten by 682 before they could complete the task. Dash. Item, SCP-3802. Tissue test record. N.A. Termination test log, a fire sprinkler in the roof of 682 and APOS, S container was filled with a small amount of SCP-3802 and dispensed onto 682 and APOS, S scalp. Over the course of one hour, 27 tumors developed on 682 and APOS, S body. During the process, 682 vocalized extreme distress and caused considerable damage to its containment unit. The tumors then took the shape of fully grown giant rabbits, genus, Ocuniculus domesticus, considerably larger than is typical of their species. The tumors then began to animate, grow fur, 
and separate from 682. During the process, 682 and Apos, S scalp, left leg, most of the skin on its lower back, most of its stomach, and various other places, accounting for about 40% of its body mass at the time, were torn off with the tumors. The SCP-3802-B instances showed considerable affection towards 682, attempting to snuggle beside it, but were promptly eaten by 682 as it regenerated. Equals 5, OK, that and Apos, S enough testing products from this and Apos, Dado and Apos, character, especially after the banana incident, 05-1. Dash. Item, SCP-073. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test log, denied by 05-8. Notes. I can't and Apos, T really blame you for suggesting this, but still, no. If 682 adapted to and copied SCP-073 and Apos, S capabilities, it would become impossible to kill it. Furthermore, we wouldn't and Apos, T even be able to harm it. Maybe in the future when we understand 682 and APOS, S capabilities more, but until then, denied. 05 dash. Dash. Item SCP 1915. Tissue test record, NA. Termination test log. Begin log. 423 and 17 seconds SCP-1915 is transported to SCP-682-S containment facility. SCP-1915 seems to have been convinced it is a guest at the site to fix financial issues. 425 and 54 seconds SCP-1915 enters the containment observation area and asks to see the documents relating to their financial problems. SCP-682 does not undergo any changes. 439 and 59 seconds SCP-1915 discusses Site-8, Anapos, S financial records and budget reports. SCP-682 begins to thrash violently. 445 and 30 seconds at this point, SCP-682-S containment chamber and observation area are changed into a large office room and holding tank with SCP-682 resembling a large Komodo dragon. 5 hours and 15 seconds SCP-1915 notices SCP-682, and asks what it is. Site Director A explains it is the resident Komodo dragon that no one can get rid of. D A explains it is responsible for most of their financial troubles as it messes with equipment, and no one can get it to leave. 5.01 and 30 seconds SCP-1915 attempts to interact with the Komodo dragon by opening a can of cat food from a mini-fridge nearby. SCP-682 looks and snorts at it. 5.05 and 50 seconds SCP-1915 returns to his office and begins to file reports. SCP-682 now resembles an iguana. 5.40 and 14 seconds SCP-1915 finds a document and begins to make changes to it. The document seems to be a flat tax proposal. 6.10 and 54 seconds SCP-1915 finishes and shows signs of surprise. SCP-1915 proceeds to then head towards the large office area. SCP-682 now resembles a newt. 612 SCP-1915 proceeds to gather every staff member to the large office to announce its discovery. Most are annoyed or uninterested as SCP-1915 produces the document. Dr. A asks what it is. 620 and 43 seconds SCP-1915 explains that the document was a flat tax proposal proves that SCP-682 is actually related to data expunged, which in itself is remotely related to Wales. This in turn debunks numerous rumors and theories of SCP-682. 6.25 and 23 seconds all staff members begin to take notes and begin to discuss changes to the facility and containment of SCP-682. Most seem to be related to luxury. 
6.39 and 54 seconds D8, suggests showing the document to SCP-682. 6.40 and 10 seconds SCP-1915 shows the document to SCP-682, which now resembles a goldfish. 6.40 and 12 seconds the goldfish proceeds to turn right side up. SCP-682 is believed to have somehow died of shock. All personnel begin to berate SCP-1915 for killing the goldfish. 6.45 and 17 seconds SCP-1915 proceeds to apologize and finishes the final reports and leaves to return to its original containment site. Site 8 returns to its original form soon after its departure with SCP-682 regenerating and reanimating soon after. End log Notes The reason for SCP-1915 and APOS-S move to Site H is unknown, and current belief is that an attempted termination of SCP-682 was made, and affected by SCP-1915 to reflect its status quo. SCP-682 of you has only described the experience as humiliating and has shown signs of aggression towards any mention of SCP-1915. No other information has been found for the cause of the event. Dash. Item, SCP-3008. Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination Test Record, SCP-682 was placed in a portable containment tank which was inserted into SCP-3008 via a radio-controlled delivery vehicle. The vehicle turned out of the line of sight of the doors, and signal was lost. SCP-682 was presumed lost within SCP-3008-1. 24 hours later, Foundation observers witnessed the doors to SCP-3008 open, and 18 instances of SCP-3008-2 emerged each carrying a large sealed cardboard box stamped with the IKEA logo. They placed the boxes on the ground, then returned to SCP-3008. The boxes were judged suspicious, and were left sealed. As they were being transported back to Site-19 for containment, the boxes spontaneously ruptured, revealing that each contained a detached fragment of SCP-682 which was nonetheless alive and animate. The fragments began to reassemble themselves, but underwent repeated misconfigurations, as a result, containment was established before the reassembly process was complete. Dash. Item, SCP-3660 Tissue Test Record N.A. Termination Test Record SCP-3660 was pressed against the skin of SCP-682 via a remote control robotic arm. The following events have been transcribed below. Begin log. One second SCP-682 is observed sleeping. Seven seconds robotic arm picks up SCP-3660 and lightly presses it against SCP-682 and Apos, S skin. 21 seconds SCP-3660 sinks into SCP-682 and Apos, S flesh. Robotic arm removed from area. SCP-682 is observed to sleep for approximately the next 7 minutes, with no activation from SCP-3660. 7 minutes 45 seconds SCP-3660 activates, and begins unzipping SCP-682 and Apos, S skin. 7 minutes 49 seconds SCP-682 and Apos, S body becomes hollow, and a common leopard gecko, identified as SCP-682 emerges from the unzipped portion. SCP-682 appears to be in shock. 7 minutes 56 seconds SCP-682 begins running around the containment chamber, presumably seeking out a way to breach containment. 8 minutes 3 seconds SCP-682 headbutts the west wall of the containment chamber several times, attempting to breach containment, to no prevail. 8 minutes 12 seconds researcher Jetler enters the containment chamber.
SCP-682 quickly turns around, and begins chirping and squeaking. 8 minutes 19 seconds researcher Jetler reluctantly steps on SCP-682. 8 minutes 30 seconds SCP-682 begins rapidly growing in size, reaching into Napos's previous mass in approximately 20 seconds, all while retaining it in Napos's appearance as a leopard gecko. 8 minutes 58 seconds SCP-682 swiftly consumes researcher Jetler and breaches containment. Containment breach alarms Blair. Eng log. Notes SCP-3660 was recovered undamaged, and SCP-682 was recontained eight hours after initial breach. SCP-682 slowly shifted back into its previous appearance over the next two weeks. While we don and Apos, T no Y 3660 was able to be applied to 682. We and Apos, re lucky we were able to recontain it with minimal casualties. 05 dash dash item me SCP 426 tissue test record NA termination test log denied by 05 dash Notes. I do not see how I will affect SCP-682. He might try and electrocute himself, but we both know he will only survive, denied. 05- Dash. Dash. Item, SCP-217. Tissue test record, positive. Tissue was affected by infection, and followed typical symptoms. Termination test log, SCP-217 has been pumped into SCP-682 and Apos-S cell via gas pipe. SCP-682 and Apos-S cell has been sealed with a decontamination airlock between him and the researchers. The following log was captured by a camera on the east wall of the containment chamber. Begin log. One second SCP-682 is observed sitting. 7 seconds SCP-217 gas has been ejected into the containment area. 21 seconds SCP-682 is visibly coughing as SCP-217 enters SCP-682's respiratory system. SCP-682 is observed to have no visible reaction to SCP-217 for 9 days. 224 hours 36 minutes 24 seconds SCP-682 begins howling in visible agony, as conversion begins. SCP-682 continues to roar in pain for 35 minutes 48 seconds. 225 hours 12 minutes 12 seconds SCP-682 and Apos, S screams slowly get quieter until they are completely silent. SCP-682 appears to be in shock. SCP-682 remains silent for, for 36 minutes 48 seconds. 225 hours 49 minutes SCP-682 begins laughing manically and is now immune to SCP-217. End log. Notes. All right, even though the infection did not kill SCP-682. I found this test promising. All the infectious SCP in Apos, SSCP-682 has been exposed to, he is now immune to. I request to do further study on SCP-682 as we might be able to create a vaccine slash cure to some incurable diseases or even create our own SCP-500. Dr. Isla Stewart. Dash. Item, SCP-081. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test log, denied by 05 8. Notes 05 colon May I remind you that SCP 081 is human specific? A tissue test is a waste of time and resources. 05 8. Dash. Item A professional boxer. Tissue test record, denied by 05 8. Termination test record. Testing denied by 05 8. Notes I have nothing to say. 
L5 dash dash item SCP-407 Tissue Test Record NA Termination Test Record 025 SCP-682 didn't seem to be soothed by SCP-407 045 SCP-682's wounds from previous experiments heal rapidly SCP-682 opened its mouth and emitted a high-pitched noise. 125, SCP-682's mouth filled with a white, foamy substance. SCP-682 screamed. 155, SCP-682 swallowed the substance and choked. 235, SCP-682 shot the substance out of its mouth, similar to the way a toxoid shoots water. 355, SCP-682 collapsed and remained unconscious for five minutes, presumably to heal quicker. Once regained consciousness, SCP-407's effects demanifested. Dash. Item, SCP-835. Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination Test Record. SCP-682 was released only upon direct contact with SCP-835. Multiple polyps are observed to reach out, ensnare, and begin pulling in SCP-682, still weak and by acid immersion. SCP-682 can be heard vocalizing, redacted, seemingly in extreme distress. Although many polyps became slightly cracked, as well as significant portions of the surrounding seafloor destroyed, SCP-682 was successfully swallowed. Video feed of the journey down the endapos, throat endapos, of SCP-835 proved ineffective, as the extreme pressure of the internal walls cracked the device lens, as well as obscured significant portions of footage. Live audio feed, however, remains somewhat intact. SCP-682 can be heard attempting to thrash, howl, and, redacted, throughout the course of the several hour long consumption. At approximately 15 hours 42 minutes 17 seconds after initial consumption, an intense steaming sound can be heard through the audio coming from SCP-682. Minor recoil from SCP-835 can be assumed due to the low, deranged rumbling emitted from the internal walls. Dr. A described the sound as almost an extensive grunt of pain, as though you and Apos, they been holding a heated metal slab for a bit too long. The vibrations of the rumbling distorted the audio devices beyond use, thus rendering them defective. At approximately 27 hours 33 minutes 57 seconds after initial consumption, minor spills of digestive fluid, fecal matter, and SCP-682 material, collected and burnt as necessary, are ejected from each of the polyps. The main portion of SCP-682 that remained intact is ejected from the centralmost polyp, appearing skeletal with the internal organs only held up by loose remaining skin. Special containment procedures are enacted for both Keta-class SCP and Apos S. No further signs of damage or change are observed within SCP-835. SCP-682 is observed to be immobile, unconscious, and barely breathing for 32 hours 25 minutes 22 seconds after containment is re-established, but basic regeneration occurs, consistent with standard termination attempts. Constant monitoring, as well as armed MTF required on site. At approximately 8 days 11 hours 43 minutes 54 seconds after containment is re-established, SCP-682 undergoes a drastic metamorphosis, seemingly caused by the effects of SCP-835. Approximately 66% of SCP-682 and Apos S scales open up to reveal quasi-humanoid faces, all of which screaming in agony, wailing in despair and order spelling fluid matching that which is found within the endapos, stomach and apos, of SCP-835. Twelve distinct polyps similar to those connected to SCP-835 grow out of SCP-682, coated with the same adhesive substance as found on the original subject.
These adaptations, in addition to the standard strength and resilience of SCP-682, resulted in a containment breach, causing the deaths of eight staff and researchers, as well as eight injuries. Containment was re-established 4 hours 4 minutes 12 seconds after initial breach, only possible due to growth dissipating naturally. Notes any survivors of the initial breach must be terminated on site to prevent infections caused by SCP-835 to spread. All we and Opos, they gained from this experiment was temporary and Opos, gets and shiggles and Opos, followed by permanent staff loss. I hope to whatever sick entity is watching us right now that this test never happens again. 05 dash dash item SCP-2953 tissue test record N.A. Termination Test Record SCP-682 is shot by a bullet made of 2,953 and is successfully transformed and became comatose for a period of 30 days before reverting to its baseline state. Further testing showed that 682 will still transform after repeated tests. Notes ICANN and APOS he believe it worked. Too bad we only have a limited supply of 2,953 otherwise we would have a consistent way of containing 682. Dr. Nolan. Dash. Item SCP-166. Tissue test record. Sample decomposed without incident. Termination test record. SCP-166 is placed in SCP-682's containment chamber. SCP-682 runs toward SCP-166 as it begins to melt. SCP-682's melting state accelerates as it gets closer to SCP-166. At the point of contact, 682 has become what could only be described as a patch of grass covered with multiple flowers. Approximately 15 minutes later, SCP-682 begins to regenerate at the same speed it initially melted at, regenerating faster and faster as time goes by. Upon full regeneration, SCP-682 can be observed with several flowers and mushrooms on its back before a tree spontaneously sprouts out of its back, partially destroying the roof of its containment chamber. Note Do I have to pay for the damage to the roof? Dr. Traumaxith. Note. Perhaps. 05 5. Dash. Item SCP 686, second attempt. Tissue test record, denied by 05. Termination test record, denied by 05. Notes. Have to give you credit. It was quite the spectacle until everyone remembered how two streams of high-velocity liquids can puncture glass. And flesh. We have ordered the destruction of all photographic and written documentation of the first termination experiment to avoid incentivizing further incidents. We will not expose 682 to 686 again. This is final. Dash. Item SCP-165. Note, to avoid possible loss of the original SCP-165, a sample of SCP-165, designated SCP-165-1, was separated from the main mass and allowed to reproduce until it was large enough to engulf SCP-682. Tissue test record, SCP-165-1 completely consumed the tissue sample. Termination test record, SCP-165-1 was placed above a trapdoor, beneath which SCP-682 was then positioned. SCP-165-1 was then dropped onto SCP-682. SCP-682 was intermittently visible within SCP-165-1, thrashing about and attempting to extricate itself from the dune but ceased movement and was completely engulfed approximately 10 minutes after initial exposure. SCP-165-1 continued to swirl about SCP-682 for another 20 minutes before slowly falling motionless. Approximately 5 minutes passed thereafter, at which point SCP-682, now roughly half a meter long, burrowed out of the dune. 
as no response was observed from SCP-165-1, six agents of MTF Epsilon-9, Fire Eaters, entered the room and used incendiary weapons to suppress SCP-682 and SCP-165-1, although the latter did not exhibit any response when targeted. SCP-682 was captured in a small portable containment unit and removed from the testing chamber before it could recover from its injuries or return to full size. Subsequent investigations determined that all individual specimens in SCP-165-1 had perished prior to SCP-682 and Apos's emergence due to ingestion of an unknown toxic chemical. The skeleton of SCP-682 and Apos's original Full-size body remained at the center of SCP-165-1 Anapos, S mass, completely intact except for a sizable hole burrowed through its skull. Notes It seems that SCP-682 was unable to regenerate its flesh, due to SCP-165-1 filling its space. It must have exuded some kind of pesticide to kill 165-1 then reformed a smaller body inside its own skull, the only part of its body not full of sand, and burrowed out. Dr. Leroy Carlson Dash Item SCP-101 Note Before the prior test, Dr. Leroy Carlson requisitioned SCP-101 in the event that SCP-165-1 failed to terminate SCP-682 but successfully reduced it to a small enough size to be consumed by SCP-101. Tissue Test Record See results of previous SCP-101 test. Termination Test Record SCP-101 was placed beneath the portable containment unit holding the small burned SCP-682 that resulted from the test with SCP-165-1. The unit was then opened, causing SCP-682 to fall into SCP-101, which consumed it without issue. SCP-101 was placed in a fortified testing chamber for observation. Approximately 30 minutes after consuming SCP-682, SCP-101 began to intermittently emanate a gurgling sound. Gurgling continued to increase in frequency and volume until, with a sound resembling an extremely loud belch, SCP-101 expelled the partially digested remains of SCP-6A2. SCP-6A2 was still approximately the same size as it had been when fed to SCP-101, though it immediately began to regenerate. Dash. Item SCP-173 Note, during the previous test, Dr. Leroy Carlson requisitioned SCP-173 in the event that SCP-101 failed to terminate SCP-682 but it remained at its reduced size. Tissue Test Record, N.A. Termination Test Record, SCP-682 was rapidly placed back in the portable containment unit and rushed to an adjacent testing chamber containing SCP-173. Portable containment unit was deposited in the chamber and all personnel evacuated, leaving SCP-173 unobserved. The sound of bending metal was heard, followed by several loud screeches from SCP-682. Fifteen minutes of silence followed, at which point personnel re-entered the chamber. The portable containment unit had been destroyed and SCP-682 had been reduced to a pulp that exhibited no signs of movement or regeneration. SCP-173 was removed from the chamber, which was then sterilized with incendiary weapons by MTF Epsilon-7. Dr. Leroy Carlson is to be awarded the Foundation Star for the neutralization of SCP-6A2. Two weeks after this incident, a fully regenerated SCP-682 emerged from Site-19 and Apos's sewer system and attacked the site, terminating a Personnel before Mobile Task Force New 7, Hammerdown, was able to subdue the object and return it to containment. It is currently theorized that traces of SCP-682 remained on the surface of SCP-173 after the previous test, and were then carried into the sewer system during the next cleaning of SCP-173 and Apos's containment chamber. Dash. 
Item, SCP-165-2, followed by SCP-173, followed by chemical and incendiary sterilization of SCP-173, both testing chambers, and SCP-173 and APOS, as containment chamber. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record, denied. Note. Stop it, Carlson. 05 dash. Dash. Item, SCP-5000. Tissue test record, N.A. Termination test record, a transcription of the journal entries stored in 5000 and APOS, S databanks were read aloud to 682. Upon completion of reading, researchers questioned 682 regarding its interpretation of events. You almost understood once. Maybe one day you and I'll pass. L will actually do the job right. Dash. Item, SCP-5004-B. Tissue test record, denied by o 5 a Termination test record. Denied by O5 A. Note. While I admit this would be pretty funny to watch, we both know what would happen in the end. Denied. O5 Dash. Dash. Item SCP 067. Tissue test record, NA. Note. Whilst this will not do any damage to 682, we could gather potentially useful information about its past. Researcher Termination Test Record SCP-067 Introduced to Containment Chamber SCP-682 Appears Curious It goes on to pick up the pen with its right forearm. Immediately, it begins scratching something onto the floor. SCP-682 utters several profanities, likely due to shock. After approximately three minutes, SCP-682 throws SCP-067 to the side of the chamber, SCP-067 undamaged, before doing what research personnel have described as proudly examining its creation. SCP-682 of you has drawn an image, via scratching into the steel, of itself sitting on a mound of human corpses, surrounded by a group of crying people wearing the armor of Roman legionaries. A standard protrudes from the mound, ornately inscribed with Latin text reading Legio 9 He Spona, and an image of what appeared to be a bull. SCP-067 successfully recovered due to temporarily increased docility of SCP-6A2. SCP-682's request to have the image preserved in its containment chamber denied, although it was recorded for later study. Note. Well. That's that mystery solved. Researcher Dash Allison Eckhart, SCP-2565 Tissue Allison Eckhart Record, N.A. Allison Eckhart Test Record Allison Eckhart was introduced to Allison Eckhart and Apos, S. Testing Chamber. Once spotted, Allison Eckhart slowly approached Allison Eckhart. Alison Eckhart began to open its jaw with the intention to eat Alison Eckhart. Alison Eckhart abruptly stops and closed his jaw back. Alison Eckhart began sniffing Alison Eckhart. After doing so, Alison Eckhart walked away from Alison Eckhart. Researcher Alison Eckhart questioned Alison Eckhart regarding his encounter with Alison Eckhart. Alison Eckhart. What a stupid name. So disgusting can and Apos, T even eat that. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.